No portion of this program may be reproduced without the express written permission of the UQAM BB Broadcast Group Incorporated. Safe trip, baby. The biggest names, the best talent. How about that? And your home for Miami Dolphins football. Fantastic. Sports Radio 560 WQAM. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Hey, oh, God. Me and Roger show coming up next. It's not a sports show, though, so who the hell cares about this? To my junior, honey. Senator Larry Craig was arrested in an airport men's room during an undercover sex sting. Accused of soliciting sex from a man who turned out to be an undercover police officer. Now, for the first time, the senator and his wife, Suzanne, are telling their story. I have been in that bathroom, I don't know how many times uh, over the years. This particular bathroom is described as a hot spot for anonymous sexual encounters. Yeah. Were you aware at all, Senator, of the reputation of that specific bathroom? Oh, yes. According to this officer, you looked into the stall, mm -hmm. and the next thing he says that happened is that you came under the divider into his stall, mm -hmm. and you said, quote, pickle here? I did say that. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Sex in that bathroom? Yes. And pulled my pants up and stepped out. Honey? Are you gay? There's no question. Absolutely. It was a marriage of convenience. To cover, to cover a gay lifestyle. Oh. Yeah. Yes. It is simply true. And so will you resign? No, I won't resign. I will finish out my term traveling the country. Soliciting gay sex. Yes. It's important to me, and I'm going to use all of the rights I have as a citizen to try to do that. Coming up, I'm the bad boy. A naughty boy. Probably even a nasty, bad, naughty boy. Okay, 10.02 at 560 WQM. He's traveling the tea rooms, baby. He's on the tea room, Larry Craig tea room cruise. Did Joe forget to mention Neil's next? He's probably so excited about getting on that plane and traveling across the pond to London for that big dolphin loss against the Giants this weekend. <laughs> what? Nothing. I get that joke. Don't you think that's what it is? Sure. That must be it. All whipped up into a frenzy about the big trip because tomorrow we got uh, Jesse Jackson all up by himself at the AAA Arena tomorrow morning because Joe ain't going to be there. But tomorrow afternoon we got Mad Dog and Joe Rose from London for three hours. And then we got uh, OJ and Cannell. Which that, you know something? I have a feeling that's going to be the new afternoon show when Hank departs at the end of the year. is going to be OJ and Danny Cannell. To which all I can say is... Oh, my God. Wow. These people, I don't know where to start with Tom Jicka's blog, which I found all by myself, by the way. None of you, not all you helpful people out there on our MySpace uh, came through with that. Not the palm tree guy, not the uh, Mickey Mouse, uh, Felix the Cat guy. Nobody else found that. I found it. Tom Jicka just roasts QAM and ass. Nice going. I like Tom again. I used to, you know, I used to like him a lot, then I hated him like poison. You know, actually, he hated me like poison. Because I dared to uh, criticize him. First, his wife hated me like poison, then Tom hated me. But now I like him again because he ripped this place the ass it so richly deserves. But anyway, so a chicken neck yesterday, Boca Brian, sends along to me a uh, thing. It says, here's the bird's eye lows, uh, lowdown on what's going on with them, meaning the Beasleys. By mm -hmm. the way, anybody out there contemplating buying stock in BBGI Beasley Broadcasting, don't do it because why would you want to buy stock in a company where they don't pay their bills? Wouldn't that be the first indication that these people are a bunch of deadbeats and not a reputable business that you want to, like, put your life savings in and invest in their uh, skills? Right? Right. Since the start of 07, invoices will stack up for months at a time, says Chicken Neck, and only at the urging of my attorney, direct to corporate, they will acquiesce with a couple of checks for two or three old invoices. Then that's it. A few more months go by, have to call the attorney again. Had the meeting with Joe Bell over the summer. He's kept in touch with me about it. There's obviously nothing he can say or just don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you, Brian. I don't know what to tell you, Chicken Act. That's probably what he tells him. I don't know what to tell you. That's what Joe always says. I don't know what to tell you. Ho, ho, ho. Then there's a copy of a uh, stub from a check. Got this today. Made me as happy as a one-legged man in ballet class, says <laughs> Boca Brian. And there's like three um, invoices for 300 bucks a piece. 900 bucks you got to check. How do you like that? Nice going there, Beasley's. The dates were 814, 821, 828. Well, that's only a couple months ago. <laughs> he, has to, he has to have his attorney keep calling corporate over in Naples in order to squeeze a few bucks out of them. This is the kind of company we work for. 
audience thinks it's a joke. They think I just make that up. Now, I did get my paycheck yesterday, a day early. Oh. Nice going there, Jolly Joe, you fat ass. But that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an extraordinary case, I guess. I don't know what it is. Maybe because i got such a good agent. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. You want to hear Tom Jicka's blog? Yes, yes, I do, for you once. You will be extraordinarily pleased. By the way, before I do that, the lineup on this radio station has reached a point now. It's reached a level at which I don't know whether I can bring myself to read it every day. I try to do it because I want to promote oh, whatever on. else we got. What? You can do it. Okay, two to four today because the humper is busy at Monmouth covering the Breeders' Cup, I guess. So we got uh, Ed Kaplan two to four right in broad daylight when people are actually awake. Then from four until seven, we've got the big O, rock solid, and Danny Cannell. Oh my God! Right in the middle of the day, followed by <coughs> six to seven, Dolphins All Access with the big O and Cannell, which sounds to me like they're on for three hours. Seven to nine, it's Hurricane Hotline at the Ratskeller for the Hurricanes. The 9 to 10, more Dolphins All-Access infomercial, the High School Gridiron Report with John Linder and Larry Bluestein. And then, World Series game number two joined in progress, 10 to midnight. See, I missed that yesterday when I was promoting the fact we got the World Series, which nobody listens to on radio anyway and generates no number. Joined in progress. And that's what's got Tom Jicka whipped up into a frenzy, pissed off and fired up, little Tommy. The headline on his blog is WQM's World Series Agenda, a disgrace. Absolutely. A disgrace. He says, remember those days of the past when part of the treat of the World Series was hearing the games called by play, play, play-by-play announcers of the competing teams rather than the network regulars who have taken over now? XM Satellite Radio is bringing back that custom for this year's Boston-Colorado matchup. Subscribers will have the option of listening to the Rockies announcing team on one channel, the Red Sox on another, the standard national feed on a third, and a Spanish call on a fourth. In addition to the diversity, this will be a welcome service for baseball fans in Broward who can't pick up WEFL out of Palm Beach. It'll be the only way they'll be able to hear all of the World Series on radio. WQAM will be joining the World Series games in progress... In order to air Dolphins All Access, the unlistenable nightly program that's part of the package the station had to swallow to land the overpriced rights to the games of this winless team. Wow. Can I read that paragraph again? Do I have your permission? Please, please read it twice. WQM will be joining the World Series games in progress in order to air Dolphins All Access, the unlistenable nightly program that's part of the package the station had to swallow to land the overpriced rights to the games of the winless team. Oh, and seven last time I checked. Oh, Oh. And seven. It's one thing to preempt the World Series, to want our commitment to another local franchise's games, to do it for what amounts to a nightly infomercial is beyond disgraceful. To be fair, the ticket 790 did the same thing when it had the rights to the Dolphins. That was before Joel Feinberg got busted for beating up his girlfriend, by the way. What's your name? Susie Penrod? Yes, Susan. Susan Buckingham. Susan, you're really cruising and you're losing. Granted, the Dolphins are still number one in town despite possibly being on their way to an imperfect season, but would fans be underserved by only nine hours a week rather than ten of all access during the World Series? Leaving the talk show about a half hour early Wednesday and Thursday nights is all it would take to present the first two World Series games from the first pitch in their entirety. Actually, that's not quite true. To add insult to stupidity, the World Series will not be joined on Thursday until 10 p.m. so that WQM can present a high school football talk show. Oh, my God. I think I just read that. Deny all access. Saturday's third game could be the only one presented in its entirety on WQM since the Hurricanes are off this week. Maybe WQM will start the Dolphin pregame show a day early. What a shtuch that is. How do you like that for a shot, huh? Mm-hmm. Nice going, little Tommy. Sunday, a form follows. It could be very late in World Series Game 4 before WQM joins the broadcast after a five- or six-hour Dolphin postgame show because only a four-hour postmortem just won't do. And then here comes the here comes the winner. This sentence right here, I should circle it, have it framed in gold, and put up on the wall. Tom Jicker writes, It is no accident WQM has managed to squander the dominance it had from the moment it became a sports talk outlet. Oh! I'm going to read that sentence again with your permission, even without it. Okay. It is no accident WQM has managed to squander the dominance it had from the moment it became a sports talk outlet. That is correct. Th- these people specialize in one thing. And I'm talking about Jolly Joe Bell and his little boy program director. They specialize in... Crap. That's right. That's what they know. They really know their... Crap. Make no mistake about it. They just inundate the audience with crap. That's why they... That's the vanishing audience, what used to be the audience. 
Because it's not that the guys across the street are putting something good on the air, good product. No, absolutely not. In fact, once they drop off, like I said the last couple of days, drop off that bogus July from the rolling three-month trends, which will be the very next trend comes out, it'll be August, September, October. Their number is also going to be in the toilet. Move over, tidy bull man. Got a lot of company in there, baby. What a what a scathing and very accurate. I, I I take issue with none of what he said. Although I will say again that World Series on a radio since all the games are at night now that gets uh, zero. Oh, nothing. Because anybody who cares is uh, watching it on TV on free TV, and not only are they watching it on TV, but there's two different telecasts. You're aware of that, aren't you, Chris? Yes. They got the Fox telecast with uh, who's doing it? Uh, Joe Buck. I really couldn't tell you because I really don't care about I think it. Joe Buck. And then and, and the unction is Tim McCarver. And then they got the alternate uh, Major League Baseball. I, I forget what they call it. But uh, Dave O'Brien, that turncoat, is on there with, uh, what's his name, Rick Sutcliffe. So there's everywhere in the world to see it for free, and uh, nobody listens to it on the radio. So, granted, it's a disgrace and embarrassment, but uh, nobody listens anyway. So it's not it's not quite as big of a Simmons as Tom would make it. But I'm glad that he did make a big deal out of it because it's just another excuse to rip these people the giant, fat, smelly, pimply ass that they so richly deserve. They are pathetic, pathetic. Look at this lineup today, man. Well, who is on the air? I'm not going to say it. I didn't want to say it. I mean, Eddie, Eddie Kay's a, he's a lame duck anyway. Eddie's on the way out. They already tried to can him once, and then there was like a rebellion against that from all those gamblers. And Eddie is back, but he's on the way out. they got to find somebody real cheap who will pay them to work at night, like the Beast. And you know it's going to be the Beast because he's a Clarence's boyfriend, so he'll obviously get the nod. Plus, he's got to make that extra cash to support that baby that he made. Yeah. I, I just don't think about yet. that, and it just, I don't know, it just makes me gag, the fact that that creature is reproducing. Not that I don't like him. I mean, he's, you know, he's a likable guy, although he doesn't belong on the ear, even to say hello or goodbye. And also a professional troublemaker. We've got several of those around the building. They waddle around. Robert Grieper, remember when Mo was there, and he'd come in and uh, sure. you know, diss Mo to us, and they'd go back and diss us to Mo, and diss that. and uh, Hey, they're a valuable resource. Yeah. Twelve minutes after ten at five sixty WQM. Happy Thursday! It is a Thursday, which means we got our Neil deal coming up at uh, noon today. No, 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 no. The honey, Junior. Miami, where the losers all go, there's a big fat bastard named Jolly Joe. He manages a radio station there, and when it comes to paying bills, Joe don't care. Get me Joe, I'm on a radio, oh, 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 oh. Get me, get me, get me Joe, what a show, oh, 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 oh. get me Joe. Joe's quick to point out that Beasley Greed has a spending freeze. <laughs> Cracker, please. I'm not the only one who's being left with no choice but to leave on your desk a steaming pile of joys. Can't be Joe. Man, what a radio echo. Oh, 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 oh. Let me, let me, let me Joe. Let me Joe. Oh, 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 oh. I'm looking forward to seeing Deadbeat Joe on the corner of Jog and Palmetto Park Road. Walking through the traffic with a cardboard sign that says, I'm a Deadbeat Bob. Can you spare me a dime? <laughs> <laughs> Deadbeat Joe, you're gonna get rough. Amen. 1018 at 560. So Tom Dickens says it is no accident that WQM has managed to squander the dominance it had from the moment it became a sports talk outlet. They squandered it, baby. They blew it down the toilet. And fat-ass Jolly Joe, man, from the moment he came in, from the moment the Jolly Joe Bell regime started, I would say that he and Scam Cameron have a lot in common. Maybe that's why it's a perfect fit, you know, QM and the Dolphins. Okay. You see the direction that it does. You know, it makes sense. I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah. A good match. 
Anyway, how's that poll coming? We do have a poll, and Chris says we can make our goal as a thousand today. We have nine hundred and ninety-two votes. Can we do it? Nine ninety four, yeah, I think we can do it. Nine ninety four, boy, you're ahead of me. I'm not going to talk about the fact that uh, Chris and George invite people in for the free food we get on Thursday so they can get laid. I'm not going Why? to mention that. Why? We talk about it. Oh. Do you really? Sure. I thought Chris was very... Oh, it's not Chris that's uptight. It's his girlfriend that's uptight about me mentioning her on the air because... You know, maybe that's what he doesn't want to talk about. Oh. Well, they're not doing anything, okay? They're just eating. That's right. What was most overhyped? That's our poll question today. We have 994. and Let's get a whole bunch more. Or we go out the door. Uh, Y2K 461. Y2K. The world was going to come to an end. Electricity was going to get shut off. Water was going to stop coming out of your Farrah faucet. It was going to be like, oh, all the uh, Wall Street was going to get all screwed up. What are we going to do? And, of course, nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing. Not little, but nothing. Y2K. 461 wins hands down your pants. The War on Terror. 250. The so-called War on Terror. Invented so they could take away all of your civil liberties and start invading countries all over the rest of the world and hook up the long American Phew. to the oil. You know, it's, it's interesting, though, that uh, they're good. it's a good thing for the Saudis that Bandar Bush holds hands with George W. Because otherwise we'd have already bombed them into oblivion. I mean, who the hell needs them? Talk about sponsors of terror. Wasn't it the Saudis that financed 9-11 and all those attacks and 15 of the 19 so-called suicide bombers were Saudis? Yes. You start up again? War on Terror, 250. War on Terror, my ass. Democratic Congress, 136. Speaking of my ass, my God, what a disgrace. What a bunch of cowardly wimps. We, have, we don't have a two-party system. We have a no-party system. Or maybe it's just a, an all-party system. All party all day. I know people like that, you know. Party all night, sleep all day. Democratic Congress, 136. Global Warming, 54. The Segway 43. Now, how come that's not getting more votes? That probably people forgot what it was. That was going to revolutionize. Remember, they were uh, teasing it for a couple of days ahead of the announcement. It was going to revolutionize the way we live. Kind of like instead of having cars, people were going to like uh, have their like own little planes and you know fly around. Isn't that, that that's one of the visions we have for the future? Isn't it that you have your own little like strap-on wings? You know, like like Rocket that's Man. That's great. Yeah, that's a good idea. And if you want to go from point A to point B, and now that we have GPRS, you know, you can just decide, well, I'm going to fly from here. I'm going to be in Paris mm -hmm. in a few hours and just, you know, right? Right. Of course, some of those people who, you know, can't fly straight, they'll be flying into each other up there. So the Segway 43, have you ever seen anybody with one? I don't I see kids with, uh, you know, roller blades and roller balls. And yeah, I don't see anybody with a Segway. I've never seen anybody with one, I don't believe. Forty-three people said that was the most overhyped. Bird flu, 26. Oh, yeah, everybody's going to die. Bird flu. SARS, 10. Oh, believe me, I know that here. And if I ever come back there, I better go into quarantine for a few weeks ahead of time. Who was that? Was that George Corso's idea and the dearly departed Miguel? When we yes. had SARS in Toronto and I was coming down there to do a few right. shows. Back in the days when I was stupid enough to come down there and do any shows. If then, you're a queen and you're studio. unclean, you need to go into quarantine. I see. Mad Cow Disease 7 and Killer Bees 7 out of 999. Next one we hit will be 1,000, and I'm going with 1,004. They're coming in in chunks now, Chris. Chunks. Wow. Well, i got to stick around till at least noon, because that's when we got the um, Neil Deal coming up. And then George will be on. I think that's what I'm going to do, I'm just because Tom Dick has got me so pissed off. Not at him, but at these people. I was already pissed off. I'm perpetually pissed off at them because they're just, they're butchering it. And, I, and I'm the one guy that's been sitting here for the last couple of years telling you I've been giving you a, a direct play-by-play, blow-by-blow of the decimation, of the evisceration of what this radio station used to be. I mean, the, the crap that they put on the air, just amazing to me. And the stuff that they uh, signed away everybody's life to in order to get the Dolphins back on here to kiss Wayne's bald spot 50 times a day and put that Dolphins all assets infomercial on there. Just unconscionable for a team that I wouldn't wish on Hitler and uh, Man Colder. Just, just pathetic. Hey, by the way, Scam Cameron, you're tragic. Oh, don't blame Cam. He's uh, got a lot of issues. <laughs> yeah, his team blows. According to the FDLE, the Don't Taze Me Bro guy had it coming. Now, you've got a really masterful, a beautiful uh, thing there. Thank you. You've seen it, then. No, I'm talking about that. Somebody told stories? Before the show today. Can we hear it? 
Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me, bro. That's what should be done to Joe Bell and Clarence. I think we ought to have Tom Jicka come in and give him a taser Don't gun and let him tase both of them for hours and hours and hours. Don't tase me, bro. University of Florida police were Don't justified in using a taser against that student who refused to stop questioning Senator John Scary Kerry on campus last month, according to a state investigation released yesterday, the APB said. In short, the FDLE determined that our officers acted well within state guidelines, University President Bernie Mackin said in a letter to students, faculty, and staff. Or is that Mackin? M-A-C-H-E-N. Or Macon. According to the Gainesville Sun, University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications student Andrew Meyer approached an open microphone at the university auditorium and demanded that Kerry answer his questions. The student claimed that the university police department officers had already threatened to arrest him and then proceeded to question Kerry about why he didn't contest the 2004 presidential election and why there had been no moves to improve, uh, impeach President Bush, improve uh, President Bush. How dare he ask questions like that? They make way too much sense. A minute or so into what became a combative diatribe, Meyer's microphone was turned off and officers began trying to physically remove him from the auditorium, the son said. Meyer flailed his arms, yelling as police tried to restrain him. Six officers then pushed him to the ground and yelled, What have I done? What have I done? Get away from me. Get off of me. What did I do? Help me. Help. Officers then threatened to use a taser on Meyer if he didn't comply. He resisted being handcuffed and was then tased, which prompted him to scream and writhe in pain on the floor of the auditorium, according to the son. The AP adds two officers who were placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation were reinstated yesterday. Officers decided not to escalate the hard, empty hand strikes, kicks, knees, or baton. It would have looked like the officers were beating Meyer into submission. The report, which has Meyer's name and that other students blacked out, said the officers did what was necessary to control the student. There were, what, only about 100 of them, and uh, he was about, what, six, six inches tall? Mm-hmm. Our purpose is and always has been to ensure a civil and safe environment where the many types of campus activities and open discourse can occur, Police Chief Linda Stump said. Linda Stump, my ass. Meyer's been charged by police for resisting an officer and disturbing the peace, but State Attorney's Office has not yet decided whether to file formal charges. Spencer Mann, a spokesman for the State Attorney's Office, said the decision may be made sometime next week. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. 7.7. BBG's killing me. I'm gonna slash my wrist. Breaking sport whole news. We interrupt this program you want to hear for something that only a few sick of fan sport holes in management are interested in. Dolphin coach Cam 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 Cameron John John Cam Cam Cameron Swayze is holding a press conference now in progress. We'll just have to work harder and give it a hundred percent. I'll take questions. I got a question. You know you stink. Why do you always answer the same way? Ow! What you do that for? I didn't like that question. Ow! Now rephrase it. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm with Kent State Security now, you moron. Ow! Now go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Why are all sport holes dumber than dog do? Ow! That hurts, Mo. I didn't like that question either. Ow! <laughs> What's that book you're holding? Ow! Let me see that. Sport hole guide to fantasy dating. I'll take this. <laughs> That's mine! Ow! Not anymore, it ain't! Ow! Now scram! Ow! 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 Stop it now! Ow! Ow! Don't tase me, Mo! Yeah, maybe you're right. Put it there, chum! Ow! <laughs> 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 Now see here. How do you like it? No. Give that taser back. No. 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 No.
Hey, Clarence, uh, Clarence needs to be tarred and feathered. He needs to be lynched. You know those nooses they were all whipped up about? We need to get one of the nooses out there at QAM, or at least uh, maybe a few of them. Or we could burn a couple of people on the lawn out in front on a cross. Wouldn't that be good? Sure. A 52-page GAO report released on June 1st of this year warned of the Bush administration's inability to effectively handle a disaster like the wildfires currently blazing in Southern California, given how substantially increased funding for the U.S. Forest Service and the Department of the Interior was being allocated. President Bush, presiding over FEMA during the much-criticized handling of Hurricane Katrina's aftermath in 2005, promises those affected by the fires that they can rest assured that the federal government will do everything we can to help put out these fires, in addition to approving reconstruction grants for uninsured residents and business owners. I want the people in Southern California to know, says Bush to reporters, that Americans all across this land care deeply about them. If you don't have goals and strategies for carrying them out, you're in a reactive mode rather than a pre proactive mode, says the GAO's Robin Nazaro, lead author of the report to the Huffington Post. They say they're using five to ten year averages, but each year the fires get worse, so they're always underestimating what they need. White House spokeswoman Dana Perino says in response to questioning on Bush's post-Katrina disaster response etiquette, we've learned those lessons and those lessons are being applied. Former FEMA director Michael D. Brownie Brown, however, laments the fact that National Guardsmen that currently could be assisting with the efforts in California have been instead occupied in Iraq. How do you like that? The National Guard that could be in California. Jason, you're on QAM. We don't have any National Guardsmen because they're all fighting a war in Iraq right now. Not the National Guard. Pardon? Not the National Guard. No National Guard in Iraq? Not, not, there's no National Guard. Uh, no. Said Brown in a telephone interview with WJLATV, the White House needs to recognize that we are overstretched and that there is a problem. Continues Brownie Brown, they need to increase the size of the regular army and stop relying so much on the National Guard. The fact is that there are plenty of people on the ground, rebuts current FEMA director R. David Paulson to CNN. The Orange County Register in, in, indicted the federal government while lauding Governor Schwarzenegger's efforts to the contrary on limits put on the use of DCT planes to drop fire retardant on affected areas, citing bureaucratic overkill. If we had more air resources, says Orange County Fire Chief Chip Prather of the LA, to the L.A. Times, we'd have been able to control this fire. If if chickens peed, if uh, this, if that, if we had management that had any, any idea what they were doing. But, of course, all of these things are a pipe dream. So put them in your pipe. And smoke them. 1,027 votes on the poll. It's only 1036, boys and girls. How do you like that, Chris? Not too shabby. You don't care. You couldn't give a flying crap less. Am what I right, George? About? Does he care about this poll or what? No, he doesn't care about any of them, but he puts on a good show. No, he does not. Oh, okay. Oh, he puts on like a bad show. Says, Come on, people. Come on, people. With that incredible enthusiasm and sincerity. Come on, people. There you go. Now, that was good. That was the best one ever. That was great. Come on, people, what? We got 1,027 votes. Let's get 14 today. No, no, 14, my ass. It's well, less than two an hour. Two minutes. Let's get 14 today. Stop with the poll crap already, will you? It sounds to me like you're mailing it in. Stop mailing it. Leave, leave that to Mifo, okay? Leave that to Mifo. He's the one that mails it in and lives large and uses every stupid-ass, dumb-ass cliche that Steve Nichol could ever write down for him. Oh, my God. Living large, my ass. <laughs> they don't get much oh, larger. He just... Now, that, now, you know that's not true. I don't have a huge ass. Nope, nope. not anymore. Some people not in the building may have a huge ass. <laughs> some people on this show do. That was funny. Yeah, that's right. Not too far away from where you're sitting right now. Some people might have a big, fat ass. And what do they have to bring the girlfriend in there to split the food up so they don't, like, uh, bust the chair? Up, up. Yeah, my name's not Beast. There's another one. With an ass the size of... Right. Some, I think like Rhode Island and Delaware are smaller than that his ass. Funny. There are states smaller than the beast's ass. But he'll be doing uh, one of those shows. Maybe, maybe he'll be doing Hank Spot. Even though they're doing this nationwide uh, search. You know damn well that all this crap they got on now, like the Big O and Danny Cannell. I mean, oh, and what is it with these two-man shows? What is that all about? Remember how Geldy and uh, ah! Mo worked do, 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 out so do, do, do. well? That worked out really well, too. Just like the morning show we got now. I mean, uh, Bo and uh, Schmo. Kenny and Bo show that worked out really good. Didn't another another Joe Bell nightmare. Another invention of Doctor Frankenstein. A man who is wreaking havoc in this place, according to Tom Jicka. What was that line that Tom used? Where is it? He said, "Don't tase me, Mo." No, he said, 
It is no accident WQM has managed to squander the dominance it had from the moment it became a sports talk outlet. Now, it's easy for Tom to say that now because with Eddie Kay leaving, Tom won't be filling in for uh, Eddie Kay anymore because Eddie Kay ain't going to be on the station, so Tom won't be on QAM anymore. So it's easy for him to you know, take a shot like that, a really accurate and well-deserved shot, but uh, it grows you a pair of balls when you have nothing to lose. You know what I mean? What do you mean? He already, well, he already knows he's not coming back on a station to like fill in for anybody so he can like uh, rip them an ass and say, no wonder they're sucking wind. No wonder with the kind of leadership they got over there right now, kind of idiots putting swill on here. I mean, just nonstop, morning, noon, and night. Crap. Unbelievable. People that shouldn't be allowed anywhere near a microphone, much less to speak into one. And this is what it is, man, the jockocracy. We are carrying it to an extreme, the likes of which has never been seen. Like uh, Tuesday night, look at that. We had Jimmy Syphilis and Joe Bailey. I'd rather have uh, Jack Bailey from Vernon Downs on, or at least he knew where the hell the finish line was. My God, how about that Angus, I mean, Angus Allen? Let's start doing a harness racing show. What do you say? Let's do it. Go, no. So who do you like better, Harold Fisher or Sandy Fisher? Canis Mas Macho. Oh, I don't know. I like Wally Hamilton. 20 before 11 at 5. Don't start getting involved in stuff you don't know about. Then, we'll, <laughs> then I'll start throwing curves at you like Harold Snodgrass. Okay, who? And then you're really, that's right. And Tommy Wynn. Does Tom he? Wilburn. When it comes to harness racing names, man, I could sit here and I could just pop, 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 beep, 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 beep. From now until the day they stuck me in a box for years. Pop, 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 beep, beep, beep. Ray Stein. There you go. There's a guy. More twists and turns in the doggy dispute involving Ellen DeGeneres. The celebrities, the drama, the tears, things are going so terribly wrong right now. Ellen's dog, how long will this go on? Ellen's dog, I don't care who is wrong. Ellen's dog, the news goes on and on. Ellen's dog, can we make the story gone? Ellen, didn't you follow their stupid rule? It's a dog-eat-dog dog world. That's what I hear. Whatever that means. I know what it means, but it just... Anyway, it's 1046, 14 before 11 at 560 WQM. Wait till you hear what we have on later today, baby, all the way until the World Series join in progress. Tom Jicker writes, <laughs> It is no accident. You know something? I should read the whole article just over and over again. The whole Once story. an hour. How's that? No, just, uh, just over, over and over, like okay. an endless sure. loop. You know, we got the, uh, you, you know, you're reading it already. We can just loop that right now. Okay, so I can go lay down. Yeah, I mean, give Chris, you know, a minute to cue it up. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. That would be like cheating, you know? Yeah, that would be wrong. That wouldn't wrong. be right, because these people treat us so well. They give so much to this show, man. You have no idea. Well, you do have some idea. You can't complain about what they give to this show, because they don't give anything. Nothing. Zero. Zippity doo da, zippity yay. Thanks a lot, Jolly Joe, you fat ass phony. Go back to Raleigh already. Let's get a real radio person in there for once, okay? We haven't had one in the ten years we've been on. <laughs> and and we haven't hired them them. near the building. How are they going to know what one looks like to hire them? And that's a good point. If you've hummed along, tapped your feet like Larry Craig, or even danced in your seat while watching Purple Rain, Saturday Night Fever, or Train Spotting, you're not alone. Oh, Train Spotting. You try to tap your feet to train spotting? Well, there's a song. The soundtracks from those movies have been named among the 50 greatest by the editors of Vanity Fair magazine. The full list will be revealed next month in a one time Condé Nast magazine, Movies Rock, for to uh, subscribers of its 14 titles. 
Oh, you just sent me a blank page. You faxed me a nice oh, blank page. Let me try it again. What, what was it about? Poll idea. Ah! God. Purple Rain topped the chart even though it was described as perhaps the best badly acted film ever, mm. as the Vanity Fair said. Mm. While Train Spotting came in at number seven, Saturday Night Fever was eighth. The Vanity Fair editor said the Purple Rain soundtrack was a flawless combination of funk, R&B, pop metal, and even psychedelia into a sound that defined the 80s. A Hard Day's Night came in number two, followed by The Harder They Come, Pulp Fiction, The Graduate, and Superfly, American Graffiti, and The Big Chill rounded out the top ten. Didn't they play One Fine Day by the Chiffons and the Big Chill? I think they did. One Fine Day. I love that song. That's uh, Boston time in my life, early 60s, 61, 62-ish, when I was still Jewish. Saturday Night Fever soundtrack has required listening for anyone looking to heat up the dance floor, the editor said. The white suit, not so much. Hey, John Revolta, baby. He was the only problem with that play. It's John Revolta. See the way I talked that up, and mm -hmm. I could barely even hear it because he didn't have it cranked up too good. Movies Rock, which will feature stories and photos of the project stars, directors, and musicians who created the selected movies, launches ahead of a two-hour CBS broadcast of the same title in Diciembre. All right, Movies Rock, baby. Tap your feet like Larry Craig and crawl underneath that uh, stall. Don't stall. Do it now. Senator Larry Craig was arrested in the... <laughs> oh, he's the best. He's your typical self-hating fag Republican, baby. Hypocritical, right-wing, finger-pointing, finger-wagging. Wag this. Which was most overhyped? That's our poll question. We got 1,054, 58. How do you like the way they're coming in in chunks today, huh? Mm-hmm. Most overhyped. Y2K, 490. War on Terra, 271. You can't say terror. War on Terra, like in Gone with the Wind. It's the War on Terra. Democratic Congress, 145. That was going to really slow down this, this fascist train that we have going on. Did it work? No. Is it going to work? No. Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid, between the two of them, they haven't got the ball of a fruit fly. Global warming, 56. The Segway, 44. Bird flu, 28. The birds are coming, baby. The birds. We're going to all die from some nasty, evil virus. It's going to be like the Black Plague. Oh, I shouldn't have said that because we got uh, O.J. McDuffie on today, don't we? Oh, no, he's not on today. What's wrong? What happened? Oh, that's right, the big O. See, they're, they're, what they're doing is they're putting all these different matchups together, like the, I guess to, to figure out the chemistry, to hear how the chemistry sounds between, you know, like Danny Cannell and the big O and uh, O.J. McDuffie and uh, Kimba Volkamper and all these other people that don't belong on the air. The Segway 44, Bird Flu 28, SARS 10. We have some SARS bits in here, I bet. SARS. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we return you now to SARS Search. <laughs> oh, SARS 10. I did learn to wash my hands a lot, though, during those days, during those couple of months when everybody was all freaking out here. Mad Cow Disease 7 and Killer Bees 7. Look out for the Killer Bees. Or as they used to say in Rochester, 950 WBBF, the home of the Busy Bees. As in WBBF. Do you have any idea what that means? Nope. I don't either. Busy beaver. No, WBBF with minutes. Morton Nussbaum. Here's another blank page. Uh, your poor your line fax condition. machine is seeming to have some issues here again, Jerry. Every time I fax it, it says poor line condition. There's no, uh, there's no problem with line condition because everything Listen, else has come through just this fine. This sheet of paper that comes out just says fine poor is line, line condition. There's not a damn thing wrong with my machine or any of the Who said there here. was? It's fine. Who what said there was? This your paper machine is a, that comes is out of the machine problem. says poor line condition. So argue with the paper. <laughs> 1064, baby. We got 1064 on this poll. That's, I don't know. Where would that poll come from, by the way? Was that a Charlie B. poll? No, that was a, uh, what you call it, poll. Sean. Sean from Hollywood or from Hunger, wherever he's from. Who always writes these cards. Sean, by the way, you can continue writing. I mean, you can send whatever you want. I appreciate it. But you don't have to write those cryptic notes on top. What did he write about yesterday, which I read it, and it was very depressing and demoralizing about uh, Hank know. leaving? Oh, and, and he was ripping him because uh, about Hank's comments about Cecil uh, dipping his wick. I broke in through her bedroom window. See, maybe maybe part of the problem is, is that the, uh, a lot of the jocks aren't well-educated, you know, uh, which is an understatement, of course. 
And uh, they just don't, their, their social skills are rather limited, you know, so they don't understand that they're just, there's some things that you do and there's some things you don't do, and then there's a uh, doo-doo. Cecil, whatever happened to Cecil Collins? Are you keeping track of him, Chris, or what? I think he's in jail or something like that. Come on, now stop that. No, I'm serious. He is? For I what? I think so. Uh, who knows, but I believe that uh, he's in jail. I thought this was supposed to be a sports station. Tom Jick has said it's no wonder we've lost our dominance that we used to have. See, he didn't really come right out and say it, but the current regime is a bunch of incompetent losers. Losers! Look at them. They have it written from head to toe. Loser! One thing to be a boozer, it's another thing to be a loser. And that's what we got. The Pew Research Center, wait till you hear this. If you think there's any hope for the human race, at least in America... The Pew Research Center has released a new poll showing that 41% of Americans responding are unable to come up with the name of any Republican presidential candidates without prompting. In contrast, only 19% are unable to name even one Democratic candidate. 41% can't name one Republican candidate, and 19%, they can't even name Swillery. Wouldn't you think that everybody would be able to name, since she was the first lady for eight years, they'd be able to name Swillery? You'd imagine. According to the Pew Report, the Republicans' disengagement, if not disillusionment with the campaign, is borne out by the fact that many more Republicans are able to recall unprompted the names of Democratic frontrunners Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama than can name Rudy Giuliani and other leading GOP candidates. So what this says about Republicans, people who vote in that uh, direction, is dumb. Like that, dumb. Like the president, for example, dumb. Well, look at that... Uh Funky looking dog on it. You know, I have so many questions, I really just don't know where to begin. First of all, I sure hope that's not, that that's funky. not Ellen uh, DeGeneres' yes, dog. Is, I think uh, I'm going to change it. Wheel, but it is a Harley Davidson power wheel. It's a dog on a uh, uh, so, yeah, Harley. Well, not cute. Hillary Clinton's name was offered unprompted by 78% of all respondents and Barack Obama's by 62%. However, no more than 45% came up with the name of GOP frontrunner Rudy Giuliani. And even among Republicans, the figure was only 57%. The level of awareness of Democratic candidates is far beyond what it was at equivalent point in the 2004 campaign, while the awareness of Republican candidates is generally similar to that in past elections, resulting in what Pew describes as a sizable partisan gap in campaign interest. The Republicans are just hoping the whole election thing would just go away, okay? Uh, President, Congress, everybody, just go away. Leave us alone. You're going to get another blank page. How do you know that? Because I've got another fax that said poor line condition when I try to fax you that thing again. Pew's figures further show that throughout the course of 2007, about half the respondents have indicated they're following news about the candidates either very or fairly closely, roughly the same as for other major news stories. In the past, the level of interest has developed only with the start of the presidential primaries. Despite this, 55% of respondents indicated they were finding the presidential campaign dull, and 66% said elections were too long, while only 41% considered the press is doing a good or excellent job of covering the campaign. And by the way, Stephen Colbert has already moved ahead of, uh, what's his name? The midget. What's his name? Dennis Kucinich. Oh. And Chris Dodd. And Bill Richardson. He's already got the, you know, it's a joke. It's a joke, folks. Uh -huh. Who was talking about that last night? Brian Williams, somebody was talking about it. It's a joke. When asked what particular areas they would like to see better covered by the press, the, greater, the greatest number, 77% asked for more about the candidate's position on issues. But what about John Edwards' haircut? Isn't that what's important? Mm -hmm. And Swillery's boobies? By a small margin of 45 to 42%, respondents indicated they would actually like less news on who's leading in the latest polls. They don't want to. They don't want to. They want to hear about it. They want to know from it. They want to smell it. Because they know it's all a bunch of crooks, a bunch of people that talk, ba, 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 they talk a lot of crap, and it's all a bunch of crooks. And if any of them don't want to be crooks, well, they make them and their family an offer they can't refuse. And all of a sudden, it's like uh, like with Al Gore there, you know. He knew the election was rigged, that it was fixed in 2000. He gets up there and he gavels down every, shut up, shut up. Yep. Tipper and I and uh, the kids want to live, you know, we want to live. Who was in that movie, I Want to Live? It was uh, some very famous actress. Don't know if about, I saw it. About some old bag on death row in Texas. You never saw I Want to Live? I might have. I'm going to Google it during the break, and I'll tell you. Yeah, you might want to see it. I doubt it. I doubt it's it. Black, it's black and white. Yeah, boring. All black and white movies are boring. I, huh? did, I didn't say that. Like Dracula? Was Dracula boring? No, I liked it. I didn't say that. Go ahead and put words in my mouth, though. George says all black and white movies were boring. 
like Frankenstein. The biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. This is the Neil Rogers Show. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is your brain. Any questions? I can't take Florida. They got a lot of stores, you know. Public ship, office depot, best buy, and rooms to go. And tell me what street compares with Hallandale Beach Boulevard. As far as living goes, unless you're a hundred years old, lot of blows. Hostile, nasty bastards don't know the meaning of being nice. It's hot and crappy in paradise. Dish mommy toilets and angry swamp for colloquial dumb mugwumps. I hope the ice boys melt and just drown this dumb. <laughs> oh, there it is. That's the sound of South Florida. Anybody visiting South Florida right now for the first time? <laughs> that's uh, the greeting from the residents. In other words, uh, your mama. 1103 at 560 WQAN. Doug Thompson has a comment today that it might be a little bit more interesting, although it's depressing, but a little more interesting than the one about uh, that uh, Shenandoah Valley or whatever that crap was. Okay. Well, he's obsessed with that because that's where he lives, and uh, we don't care about it. At least I don't. Do you? Nope. Doug Thompson writes, America's lost soul. America, a once great nation founded on a notion of freedom, has lost its way, he says. America is a country without a soul, controlled by leaders without conscience, fueled by political agendas without honesty, and dominated by issues without purpose. Issues without purpose. Uh. Some say the loss of soul began in 2003 when we invaded a sovereign nation without reason, using rationalizations based on lies, promoting a fear based on political expediency. But America has been losing its grip on reality for many, many years. America is a victim of its own paranoia, driven by an outdated belief in a superiority that doesn't exist. That egotistical belief that our way of life is the only cure for the world's ills has led us to become a nation that attempts to export a vision of democracy that no longer exists within our own borders, to believe that our own narrow view of the world must control other peoples and other governments, and that we and only we can develop, own, and use weapons that can destroy the planet. We decry terrorism, yet we export terrorism to other countries. Our soldiers maim, kill, and torture. When we run out of soldiers, our government hires mercenaries to continue our dirty work and claim all this mayhem is necessary in the name of freedom. Whose freedom? Our own? We began losing our freedoms years ago, and that loss accelerated as the smoke swirled around the remains of the World Trade Center and the gaping hole in the side of the Pentagon. While we attached Chinese-made American flags to our car windows, our leaders deposited the Constitution into a shredder. U.S. goon squads operating under the Germanic-sounding name of the Homeland Security rounded up Americans and shipped them off to foreign countries to be tortured and denied the rights that once belonged to each and every citizen of this country. A mentally unstable president used paranoia and fear to gain unprecedented power and bring this nation to the brink of dictatorship. An effort by voters to restore some checks and balances to the system fell short when Democrats reneged on their promises and put political expediency above the will of the American people. The billions upon billions spent in Iraq devastated the economy back home, and we face an increasingly uncertain future. As we head into the 2008 presidential election season, both political parties appear destined to nominate candidates who support the status quo and offer no real return to our forefathers' dream of a government of, by, or for the people. Historians argue that America's democratic republic was always more theory than reality. Those who founded this nation did so with the premise that only white male landowners could truly be free. Blacks were slaves and women existed only to serve men. From the beginning, our elected officials came from the ranks of the wealthy and privileged. They thought elected office should be public service, not a career. Today, those who aren't rich when they come to Washington usually find wealth either in office or by cashing in when they finish their so-called public service. They answer not to the people but to the special interest groups with large political action committees. So what's the answer? I don't have one. I wish I did. I've worked around the American governmental system for more than 40 years. I've covered it as a journalist and worked within the political system for nearly a decade. I've served my country. As a young reporter writing about the fall of Richard Nixon, I thought America had sunk as low as it could go. I was wrong. The sinkhole deepened. It's kind of like QAM. The sinkhole deepens and more simple American values disappeared into it long ago. 
Too many Americans gave up too long ago on demanding honesty, accountability, or solid performances from our leaders. We judge them not individually, but in relation to other leaders, and we forgive their failings if the other side is worse, and the other side is always worse in a partisan political system. We can't reverse the downward slide of America through partisan politics. Both parties, in my opinion, are corrupt. Neither represents the interests of the American people nor gives a rat's ass about the nation they claim to serve. Independent voices on both sides of the political divide can't succeed because party leaders insist on lockstep compliance with predetermined issues driven by special interest money and political agendas. It may be time to start over to rethink this grand but failed experiment called America. Democracy, Winston Churchill once said, is the worst form of government imaginable except for all other forms. Churchill may have been right. It would be easier to judge if democracy actually existed in a place called the U.S., eh? Told you it was depressing, but he's got his thumb right back on mm-hmm. it again, Doug Thompson. He got his thumb out of the Shenandoah Valley and back deep in there. Now, the poll did come through, by the way. didn't get another blank page, contrary to your predictions of doom and oh, gloom. Oh, good. I told the engineers maybe they diddled something. They diddled my ass. What, what are you talking did. about? They diddle something. Well, what are they going to diddle that's going to make oh, the fax machine poor line condition, there. you know how they have that switchboard system in the back with all those little I wires? I don't know anything about it. I've and never been to They stuck a screwdriver in there. Oh, what's his name? Must be there with his bad hairpiece. The engineer from IOD. What that was his name? Steve uh, Ziegler. Ziegler. What? Steve Ziegler. Steve Ziegler always had that big uh, screwdriver. Right. That's it. That was the only tool he carried. It's not the only one. He also carried a bag of McDonald's. And that bad wig. I'll never forget the day I, I was taunting him so much about that ridiculous hair piece. And he came in, the, came in the studio and he took it off and he heaved it at me and never wore it again. No, no extra charge, Steve. Isn't that amazing how I embarrass certain people in like <laughs> discarding their uh, bad looking hair pieces and like, uh, you know, <laughs> nothing wrong with a chrome dome. Nope. Right? Right. Especially when you got a bad-looking piece. You know what I mean, Mo? bad So anyway, the poll suggestion is uh, kind of interesting. I like the last one. Who should replace Hank Goldberg on WQAM? Obviously, they're auditioning uh, teams and pairs and on the air. Tomorrow, we got O.J. and Cannell, two ex-jocks, neither one of whom belongs on the air to say hello or goodbye. Goodbye would be okay. Who should replace Hank Goldberg on QM? George Rodriguez should do a non-sports show with my vote, says the uh, <laughs> faxer. Bring back the crow. Bring back Scott Farrell and see if he can't lose the license for real this time. Bring back Mo. Do, 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 do. Bring back Geldy. No. Or, here's my favorite, just let the Cuban broadcast blend with the transmitter maintenance. Sure. we got this heavy-duty Castro interference, which hey. they don't tell us anything about. and I don't. Free programming, know. baby. What do you think? Now, you don't listen to the station, so you don't know how bad it is. Maybe Chris nope. can tell us how bad that Cuban interference is. See, Castro, as always has been the case, doesn't abide by international broadcast law or any other laws. So they crank up their stations to like 80 zillion watts, and if it happens to be on your frequency, you're screwed. Now, when I was at WNWS 790, we had that problem, and uh, and the station uh, pl- appealed to the FCC, and we got permission to crank up our uh, you know our power. I think we went from 5,000 to 25,000 watts or something like that, and we overcame the problem. Here, I don't think I don't know if they're doing anything about it. Are they? Do we know? <laughs> oh well, yeah, our lawyers are uh, the petitioning. Power, cost them money. They'd have to buy a new transmitter, yeah. baby. They'd have to uh, spend more money. No, we don't got it. We got to spend more money. We don't wanna. We don't wanna. Boca Brown, we got to pay him. We don't wanna. Got to pay people on payday. We don't wanna. These people are like a bunch of overgrown children, this this uh, outfit, the Beasleys. As long as I live, I'll never forget that lunch, that really marginal lunch with Jolly Joe and Norma Kent and Bruce Beasley. And at the end of our lunch, Bruce Beasley looks me at First, he starts out by telling me that they, ever since they've done the all-sports format on this station, they've lost money every year. Oh, every year. so let's keep doing that. Right. And he looked me straight in the eye and he said, we're going to have the best damn sports station in the market, period. That's all there is to it. And continue losing money, of course, but nevertheless. That's like saying that selling selling open-toed shoes in Alaska is not a moneymaker. But we're and you open it. up a shoe store and that's all you sell. It's like Birkenstocks, you know. Like a, I think it's a Charles Bronson would refer to it as a death wish. Isn't that what we have at QM, a death wish? That's what Tom Jicka said. He said, no wonder they're losing their ass over there against a slime ball like Joel Feinberg who beats up his girlfriend because he had a bad day at the track. What a, oh, brother. 
1,107 votes on there. Now, what did Chris say? We're going to get 8,000 today? We're, our goal yes, is 8,000. So. Let's go for it. Let's not set these low goals anymore, okay? Let's set goals really high. In fact, today at noon when we have those uh, meal deal deals, a hundred of them today. Let's sell those out in like the first minute and get it over with. I don't want. I don't want to be sitting here whining. Nah, nah, we got forty left. Nah, I don't want to do that again. I hate that. It's demeaning. It's uh, grotesque. You know what I mean by that? No. What do you mean? You feel unclean sitting here doing that. Well, you had the situation with Gatsby's, which I I'm just shocked by that because everybody knows Gatsby's. It's a sure, they're place. everywhere. They're all over town. It took us two days. Took you two days to sell them out. So I don't feel so bad about the previous week when I, although, and especially after getting that one email this morning. Biggest <laughs> names. <laughs> about that one place. I'm not going to go anywhere on the air. No, it's a from the The sports leader. Meridians, dumb as dirt. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could offer only one tip for the future, act strange and people will leave you alone. The rest of my advice has no basis more reliable to my own meandering experience. Put a slinky around your neck and try to walk downstairs backwards head first. Sit naked in a large bowl of Rice Krispies and sing feelings while the kernels go snap, crackle, and pop. Go up to a ticket booth and try to stick your head through the hole where they say how much. Lick a stranger. Tell them you're from Bosnia and you're a country. It's a sign of respect. Take lots of pills. One of them might work. Occasionally ask a stranger if they've heard anything from Lewis. Be annoying. During an IRS audit, staple the guy's hand to his desk. Moon a funeral. Play go fetch with a seeing eye dog while he's working. Run naked through a mall yelling, Killer bees! Killer bees! Say the word titty without smiling. Try to figure out who said Paulie Shore should star in movies. Don't be surprised if it's the same guy who said John Gacy should work with kids. Ask an old lady if you can carry her groceries and try to make a run for it. Disappear for great lengths of time. Try to touch your forehead with your tongue. It may not work, but many women will appreciate the effort. At a high school reunion, tell your old English teacher that your dog's still eating your homework. Ask Mark McGuire if he'll take a million dollars for one of his balls. Try to find the secret to Carrot Top's success. Understand your conception was an accident, that your parents got wasted and wanted a few more laughs before they passed out. Try not to lose your finger and your nose. Take up Bob Costas and toss him on the lawn next door. Go on a car trip with Bob Costas and force him to stay in his car seat. Try to dribble Bob Costas. Ask all your friends and family for forgiveness. Knowing you, you've done some crap that's really pissed them off. Wish no ill will to anyone, unless you don't like them. Then screw them, they're on their own. Realize anyone who says they're completely happy are completely full of crap. Ask a hell's angel if he's a woman or has he always walked like that. Understand that there are bad people in the world, and you may just be one of them. Sniff an old lady. Imagine Gomer Pyle in a gay bar trying to get lucky. Do this without laughing. Find what's left of your innocence. Understand it, embrace it, protect it, and every so often, take it out for a nice nosh. Care enough not to care. Hum while you eat. Act strange, and people will leave you alone. 1119 at 560. Killer bees! Killer bees! By the way. Yes? Killer steak. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got your food now. That shows my psychic powers are really kicking in big time, because I was just on the verge of asking you, what time is the food showing up? Oh, it showed up like five minutes ago. From Jake's right, right bar. Right before that break. Yep. Mm. Thickest New York strip you ever saw. Hmm. Baby back ribs, really excellent potatoes, mushroom gravy. You'd love it. Wow. Asparagus. They got some meatloaf over there. You're trying here. to make me feel bad? I do. No, no. Yes, you are. I am not. I'm trying to make you Pig. feel good. Cow. Moo cow. Well, that's good. So at noon, 40 minutes from now, we'll put those certificates on sale. And they better go really fast because it's good chow, baby. It's great stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Cenk, Cenk uh, Uger, I better pronounce his name right, because uh, 50 different people told me how to pronounce it. Cenk Uger, write some really great stuff. In The Smirking Chimp, The Gay Dilemma of Barack Obama, he writes today. Barack Obama has invited gospel music superstar Donnie McClurkin to perform with him this weekend in South Carolina because he needs the votes of black religious folks in that state. Donnie McClurkin claims homosexuality is a choice, and if you come to him and presumably tap your feet three times, he'll help you get over and under this sin. McClurkin says he was gay for 20 years, but he's cured himself. Sure, of course, no one in their right mind believes him, but the problem is religious people are not in their right mind, so what is a politician to do? <laughs> oh, what a great line. But, of course, religious people are not in their right mind. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't turn your back on religious voters. There are too many of them, and you can't accept their ridiculous assertions. So politicians like Obama get caught between a rock and a hard place. There is no good answer until this country grows up and stops believing in fairy tales. You fairy. You think McClurkin is the only one in South Carolina who believes homosexuality is a sin and should be cured? Are you kidding? An overwhelming majority of the people in South Carolina believe that. And how about the people Obama's trying to appeal to in this case? Southern black religious folks. What do we think? About 95% of them believe that? You know why they believe that? Because it's in the Bible. They're right. I'm not being facetious. It's right in the Bible. A man shall not lie with another man. It's abomination to God. Now, of course, what most people won't tell you, because they're scared to death of being un-PC about this, is that the Bible is full of Schmidt. It also says you can sell people off to slavery as long as they're not Israelites. Eating shrimp is also an abomination to God. God is one finicky dude. There are dozens of offenses that get you stoned to death in the Bible, including cursing at your parents, mixing the wrong type of cloths or plants, and adultery, George. Oh, yeah, uh, adultery. How come no one's going on a national campaign to pass a constitutional amendment against that? Oh, that's right. A lot of straight Americans do that, so they'd like to ignore that part of the Bible. Look, I know the right wing abuses, abuses the Bible for their own seedy purposes. They selectively quote the Bible and leave out whole chunks of it, including the many positive verses about helping the poor and your fellow man. They emphasize the things that divide us and are full of hate. That being said, read the Bible. It's not a pretty book. It's full of outrages, injustices, violence, mayhem, and pure, utter, nonsensical crap. Now, which politician can say that? None. So what's Barack Obama supposed to do? Tell religious people to go fig off or sing along with a clueless gay guy who's pretending to be straight? I don't know. If he wants to win, he can't ignore the religious constituency. If he wants to be a decent human being, he can't go along with people who are ignorant and hurt others by arguing in favor of discrimination. My personal answer is, don't become a politician. My global answer is, get beyond this ridiculous voodoo we call organized religion. But for the moment, it's hard to blame Obama for trying to toe the line, putting everyone on the same stage, including a gay pastor he's conveniently found now, pretending to be a uniter and hoping for the best. Bottom line is, this isn't Obama's problem, it's the country's problem. He's good, Jenk Uger. He writes some uh, good crap. Everything you read so far. Everything I've read so far is right. We're spot on, baby. Spot on, as in spot on your tie. So what else are you eating? You've got a big juicy steak and what else? And ribs? Ribs, chicken, Like they say in that Ron Popeil infomercial, baby back ribs. Blah, 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 blah. Sounds like, uh, what's his name? from the it's morning. Mahi Mahi encrusted Kenny, with uh, something. You got Mahi Mahi? My Macadamia my. nut encrusted Mahi Mahi. Mm. What is that meatloaf thing? The uh, bacon wrapped? I mean, yeah, bacon wrapped meatloaf. Oh my! Oh my! Cup, 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 cup. Look at that poll. Chris is on top of it, baby. We're going to get 40,000 votes on it today. And my fax machine is cranking up, meaning you just sent me something, and maybe it's not going to be a blank page. Maybe, maybe not. 1,126 votes on our poll today, boy. That's pretty heavy duty. That's a really good sign of something. I don't know what. Oh, look at this. It actually came out. Oh, here's the menu from Jake. So um, something I, I knew it was going to be something good. Grilled gazpacho with grilled, or chilled gazpacho with grilled shrimp, Caribbean pumpkin soup, just in time for Halloween, no less. Ahi pokey, Asian spices. You ever get an ahi pokey? No. Pan roasted crab cakes, barbecued basil, basil shrimp. Is that basil or basil rathbone? Shiitake mushroom pizzette. Mmm. What is a pizzette? I don't know. What is a pizzette, Lou? Pizza. That's what I thought it was. Like a little pizza, like oh, a personal okay. size. Prosciutto pizzette. All kinds yep. of sandwiches and good stuff. See, this is good that we actually know something about the food this week. The cowboy burger with apple smoked bacon, barbecue sauce, caramelized onions, and cheddar. God, I wish I was there only for like about an hour. 
I don't wish I was there like permanent, but just for an hour so I could uh, have all of this great stuff. Duck and shiitake mushroom quesadilla. Mm. What word did you say? You heard what I said. <laughs> Black and tuna tacos. That's a good menu. <laughs> I love Cut the taco. crap, would you please? Cut the crap. I wish I was there, but I'm not. But they're enjoying the food. Thanks, Lou. Thank you, Lou. Yes, thank you, Lou. Yeah, see, there you go. Even Chris opens up his mouth. And Chris's girlfriend isn't there today eating some of the food. This is the first I ever heard of that crap. She ain't going to get any if she gets here now. She ain't going to get any? She'll get food. all she wants, but not the food. might have to bring some. Hey, Taco Bell's on the way. Now, what, what was that? What was what? Duff Taco Hawkins. Bell is on the way. What oh, that, that, that was a comment about the uh, the, the uh, locust invasion that we always have when the food shows up here. If you're not here before the food shows up, you ain't going to get none. I thought that was a shot at my Mexican friend when you said Taco Bell is on No, the way. no. I said taco, not Paco. He's big into a fish, by the way. I don't know what that's all about. Everywhere I, I like fish, go, too. He like a, a piece of fried fish. He had tilapia last night. Which I, don't, I don't even know what that is. Fish. Well, I know it's a fish, but what, what kind of fish is it, tilapia? I don't know. Kind of Look flat. Like crap. Fish swim. They're flat. Is it like a like a um, stingray? I don't know. I don't have any. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it during the break. All right. At least it didn't smell bad, you know, because I hate fish, and but and, and I'm always with people that order fish for uh, a meal, you know. So I guess the, the tuna taco that you saw on that menu there, that's not for you. Eleven hundred and thirty-seven votes on the poll. Which was the most overhyped? Y2K beats everybody else by a million miles. Y2K, 529, almost half of the people. Y2K, when the world was going to come to an end. Little did you know. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Suck it in and hold it. Yes, Mr. Bell. Uh, Clarence, uh, get guilty on the 560-790 people mover. I want them in my plushly appointed office right away. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bell. Okay. That's nice. Hey, want to hear me sing, dude? Uh, now it's time to dance. Wait, wait, wait. I got a pocket full of barbiturates. Yeah, Joe. Hi, I'm glad you got here, Gildy. Ho, 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 ho. What's the matter, Joe? You look like you just got done eating a Vaseline sandwich. Uh, Gildy, I want you to tell Boca I have three of his checks right here on my desk that I'm going to send to him immediately. Ho, 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 ho. What check? Why, these checks right here, <laughs> next to what uh, Neil's lucrative new contract I drew up here. Uh, but I don't see no checks. Uh, that's because there are no checks. <laughs> huh? What are you talking about? I don't know. I, 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 I just I, I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. That's his favorite line, Jolly Joe. I don't know what to tell you. And at least and that's the one time he's being honest. He hasn't got a clue. I don't know what to say because I'm just a straw boss. I've got I got all the power of a fruit fly. Doesn't he? Doesn't he? Because Boca Bryant said that he said the same thing to him. I uh, let me know if there's something I can do. Yeah. Doesn't he say that to you? No. And the answer is no. No. There's nothing you can do. Maybe you can do do. You maybe you can do that. Tilapia is a freshwater fish species raised in Canada. Tilapia is also a warm water species. In Canada, tilapia is raised in land-based heated water recirculating systems. It's raised on commercial scale in British Columbia, Ontario, and Nova Scotia, eh? The tilapians got a picture of one. They're not like anything like what I thought they were. I thought they were, I don't know. The tilapia is of African, it looks to me like a, a bass, doesn't okay. it? Okay. I don't think I've ever seen one in its, uh, you know, well, natural it's got a picture form. of one here. It's of African origin, which has gradually spread throughout the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Oh, maybe that's why it must be so big in Canada. Interestingly, there's evidence to suggest the Egyptians raised tilapia in ponds over 3,000 years ago. Tilapia is also referred to as St. Peter's fish because it's been said that they were the fish that Peter caught when Christ told him to cast out his nets in the Sea of Galilee. Tilapia ranks as the second most cultivated fish in the world next to carp. Did you know that? Nope. Tilapia has lean white meat and a firm moist texture and a mild and sweet taste. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Tilapia agriculture in Canada originated in Ontario when the provincial government granted approval for commercial production in 1995. Their high growth, hardiness, low cost plant protein based diets and a strong market potential make tilapia an attractive agricultural species. Toronto is widely recognized to be the single largest market for live tilapia in North America. How do you like that, eh? We may have a really crappy hockey team, but we got a really good the fish. 
Tilapia agriculture is practiced throughout the U.S., Central America, and the Caribbean, South America, Asia, and Africa. China is the leading global producer of tilapia. Oh, brother, don't eat nothing from China. Real fat. I think you've been led down the garden path. 11.51 on the poll. The votes are just pouring in, man. It's like an outpouring of emotion by the audience. Something's happening in South Florida. I don't know what it is. I think the audience is uh, rallying to our side now that Tom Jicka finally ripped this place in. It's not just me saying these things. Anybody with, who knows even a little bit about radio like Tom, and I do mean a little bit, anybody knows the source we've seen from this crowd. As you watch it unfold and you sit back helplessly wondering when, when will the other shoe drop? When will somebody finally say, enough, Ganug, stop already. Let's get some of these people in. When in doubt, ship them out. I say let's make uh, Freaky Carlos the GM. Okay. Or the next person that walks in front of the building. Next person that walks in uh, through that door, you're the GM. God. This man, man, and I don't want to say I told you so, but you I'll told say me again. so. You're I right. I was day. wrong. As long as they don't have a pretty face, you're an excellent judge of character. So you don't understand. If they do have a pretty face, that doesn't mean I don't know their character. Oh, okay. You just don't care about their character. That's correct. You just don't character. Condoleezza, speaking of a real character, appeared agitated but generally unfazed when an anti-war protester waved blood red hands in her face, accusing the Secretary of State of being a war criminal. Blood of millions of Iraqis is on your hands, the protester told Condom Lisa, who was Bush's national security advisor when he decided to invade Iraq. War criminal! War criminal! The black-clad, blood-soaked protester screamed as authorities dragged her from a hearing room on Capitol Hill. Take her to The Hague! In Nidalons, The Hague, the international court. Rice was testified to the House Foreign Relations Committee Wednesday, where she continued what some critics see as the Bush administration's drumbeat to war with Iran. Oh, boy. We are very concerned that the policies of Iran constitute perhaps the single greatest challenge to American security interest in the Middle East and around the world, Morai said. This is mushroom cloud, Condoleezza, by the way. Although video of Wednesday's hearing shows only one protester getting in Rice's face, Capitol Police quickly removed several members of the anti-war group Code Pink, who appeared to have caused no disturbance. Code Pink members have disrupted administration officials' testimony in the past. Stop, you're hurting me. What are you doing? One of the women yelled as she was forced into congressional hearing. Don't tase me, Mo. Don't, 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 don't tase me, bro. Right. 11.56 on the poll, man. Every time that thing changes, they're not coming in by the ones, but the votes are coming in by chunks, like from Opalaka and Akalusa and all over the place. And Lake Okeechobee. What a Yahoo state, man. What a Yahoo mugwump place. Oh, my God. You drive around Florida, then you really understand what mugwump is all about. Like up to two egg. Oh. Now, Panama City, they got those beautiful beaches. They got all those born-again bigots, you know, all those little, all those punks, brainwashed punks. They're brainwashed with the religious crap, which is, means they hate everybody who ain't like them. But in the meantime, they're out there on the beach screwing their brains out. They're screwing their brains for Jesus. That must be what that's all about, right? Works for me. Don't you start with your perverted lifestyle with us, okay? Don't, don't try to pass off your perverted heterosexual lifestyle on the audience. Let me pass off my perverted homosexual lifestyle. The homosexual agenda. Yeah, that's right. 1,158 vote. Most overhyped. Y2K, 535. 46%. War on terror. 301. Democratic Congress, 154. Gornish Telfin. Global warming, 51. 61. The Segway, 48. Bird flu, 33. SARS, 11. Mad cow disease, 8. And killer bees, only 7. WQM, home of the killer bees. Wasn't that the uh, dolphins? What year was that? Which dolphin? That Baumhauer, Betters, Bo Camper. Oh, what would you know about the killer bees? What am I asking Chris? He knows nothing about you or Miami Dolphins. You know nothing about the history of your franchise. Okay. Back when they actually won a few games? That's what I hear. A.J. Dewey. So who do you like better, A.J. Dewey or Tom Dewey? Are you asking me? You don't sure even know who Tom Dewey me. was, do you? You didn't know who Tom Dewey was? No, not really. Former governor of New York with a mustache who lost to FDR in 44 and who everybody thought was going to beat Truman in 48. And the big headline in the Chicago newspaper said, uh, Dewey defeats Truman. Dewey defeats Truman. And when the late vote came in, uh, came in there, good old Harry, give him hell Harry, he won. You know, Harry, that dropped the bombs on the Japs? 
They dropped the nukes. I guess we can say one thing about Harry Truman. He's the only American president. He's the only president of any country, the only leader of any country that dropped nuclear weapons on another one. Am I right about that or what? Although we haven't seen the end of this current crew yet. That's right. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Neil God. Hello, I'm right-wing political pundit Ann Coulter. When I get home after a busy day spent bashing Jews, liberals, gays, Hillary Clinton, 9-11 widows, Democrats, illegal immigrants, little sick kids, Mother Teresa, Captain Kangaroo, baseball, and old people, I need to relax. So I have a glass of wine and open a bottle of Bitch Be Gone. Yes, two of those little gel caps, and I get so unbitchified, I could watch a West Wing marathon. <laughs> Just kidding. I could never be unbitchified enough for that. But now, I can unwind and indulge my fantasies, like what it would have been like to have been a Clinton intern. Oh, yes, Mr. President. Oh, I know I'm too skinny. Oh, oh, I'll eat more donuts. Oh, oh, and fried potatoes. Oh, oh, <clears throat> uh, was that out loud? <laughs> this is Ann Coulter for Bitch Be Gone. Remember, even stone-cold bitches have to rest sometime. Oh, we can only pray. 11.45 at 5.60 WQM. We got Eddie K for Mad Dog at 2 this afternoon. And then after that, wow, you won't believe it. I know I sure didn't. Wait till you hear this. All right. Comedian Stephen Colbert is not a threat to win the presidency, but the odds are that his satire will win plenty of laughs and maybe even some votes. A new Matt Rasmussen reports National Telephone Survey found that Colbert is preferred by 13% of voters as an independent candidate challenging Hillary Clinton and Republican Rudy Giuliani. The survey was conducted shortly after Colbert's surprise announcement. It's a joke. That he's uh, uh, lusting for the oral office. The result is similar when Fred Thompson's the Republican in the three-way race. With Thompson as the uh, GOP candidate, Colbert earns 12% of the vote. In fact, here's the breakdown. When it's uh, Clinton and Giuliani and Colbert, uh, Solary 45, Giuliani 35, and Colbert 13 percent. When it's Solary and Fred Thompson and Colbert, Solary 46, Fred Thompson 34, and Colbert 12. Last week, Colbert used his Comedy Central show, The Colbert Report, to announce that he's running for president as both a Republican and a Democrat, but only in the states of, uh, state of South Carolina. He first informed fellow jokester John Stewart on his program that so far he had only decided to officially consider whether or not he'll announce a habitual formulation of both politicians and comedians pretending to be politicians. Fifteen minutes later, however, Colbert was telling viewers of his own show, after nearly 15 minutes of soul-searching, I've heard the call. Colbert is especially well with the younger voters, most likely to be watching his show, and therefore most aware of his myriad presidential-like qualities. In the matchup with Giuliani and Clinton, Colbert draws 28% of the voters, likely, likely voters aged 18 to 29. He gets 31% of that group when his foes are Thompson and Swillery. In both matchups, Colbert's got more support with young voters than the Republican candidate. These are my people, Colbert didn't say when he was asked about the high support from young voters discovered by Rasmussen reports. They know who I am and what I'm about and so forth. Is this thing working? Are we on the air? Oh, it's the Internet? Well, why didn't you say it's the Internet, he said. An earlier survey found that only 8% of Americans said they would definitely vote for comedian John Stewart if he was on the ballot in 2008. Just 38% said they would definitely vote against him. It may be worth noting that the comedian outperformed Katie Couric. 62% of American voters would definitely vote against Katie for president. <laughs> oh, wow. What about Regis Philbin? What about the Heine Manouche? Who? What about Macy Pivik? Rasmussen Reports releases a daily presidential tracking poll along with weekly analyzation on the races for the Democratic and Republican presidential nominations. Aren't you thrilled about that? It's a joke. It's just a joke. Yeah, well, you know what? It, it reveals that the other candidates, most of them are just a joke. A yeah. sick joke. A bad one. It is, because it's not funny. It's not funny, baby. That's why it's more important to worry about uh, you know things like uh, getting laid. Things like that. And good food. So did, uh, what else you got? Did you have some desserts or something, or was that it? No, no, that was that. Uh, that's not oh, good. Yeah. We, don't, we don't need you having four. What I'm going to do, just in protest of your trashing of the uh, Atkins diet. <laughs> okay. I wasn't it doing was, that, but go ahead. I know you are. That's why I said it. You are so damn sensitive, man. You're so easy, man. Sensitive? You're easy. You don't even have to press the button. All you got to do is hold the finger up and pretend you're going to press the button like uh, <laughs> that. And all of a sudden you start, oh, I didn't say uh, that yet. Didn't, we know you didn't lie. say it. You lie all the time. I think you did say it. No. 
Well, you used to rip him all the time because you didn't oh, like he, him. Oh, he was a bad man. No, he wasn't a bad man. He was man. an a-hole a of a giant magnitude of humongous proportions. An ego the size of Uranus. Well, at least uh, Randy didn't uh, do it and, with Bob Atkinson. And I'm glad he's anyway. dead. She just fell down. Well, You're glad he's dead? I'm glad he's dead. I'm going to go Dr. dance Bob, on his grave. I'm going to go. Who personally autographed one of those books for me and said thanks for everything you did? I'm going to go at least eat a was, big bowl of spaghetti. At least he showed spaghetti. a little bit of gratitude toward me for helping him sell 8 million Atkins books. The Atkins diet works, and if you stay with it for like two or three days, you get rid of your uh, sugar cravings, too. I can't stay with it for one day, though, anymore. That's my problem. Ask me if I stayed with it yesterday. Did you no. stay with it yesterday? No. No. I had tiramisu for dessert. And ordinarily, I don't get desserts in restaurants, but uh, my buddy, uh, for whatever reason, you want to try the desserts? Yeah, yeah, okay. See, that's all I need is a little encouragement. Mm -hmm. Good. I got the tiramisu, which is not, not that big of a deal. But then I also had, what else did I have? I went and got something. Oh, yeah, an ice cream bar. Mm. Caramel uh, Crunch ice cream bar. You know, it's a damn, it's a damn good thing that Ben and Jerry's has gone downhill so bad, or I'd really be in, I'm, I'm already in bad shape, but I re really would be bad. I decided this morning I want to lose like 20 pounds on Atkins. I would be lovely. And the guy out there that's worried about my wardrobe, that jackass, he'd be pleased to know that I was coerced into dressing up to the hilt. I mean, I put on a new shirt and new pair of pantaloons and a new black belt and a sport jacket and socks. How do you like that? I like it. I've got those new non-elastic top socks, you know, that uh, don't uh, leave uh, your ankles, you know what I'm saying, don't cut off your circulation. Yeah, I'm good. Dressed up like a real mensch there last night for a good meal. Jack Cafferty says Bush is putting the poor out in the cold to fund the war, and he happens to be... Absolutely correct, sir. Now, what are you faxing me here? Oh, look at this. Before we get to Jack Cafferty, this always takes precedence on this show, child molesting priests. Because a lot of you fools out there continue putting your children in the hands of child molesters, pedophiles. Because the church told you it's a good idea. Jersey City, James T. Hanley, a former Roman Catholic priest at the center of a highly publicized sexual abuse case, pleaded guilty yesterday to a weapons offense stemming from an angry outburst at a hotel. I wonder if he beat up his boyfriend, his girlfriend. Hanley, 71, pleaded guilty in state superior court as part of a plea agreement that will likely count a year already spent in jail as time served. Hanley went to jail after missing a court date last October. In entering his plea, Hanley admitted that he used an aluminum baseball bat to threaten three employees in the extended stay America Sea Caucus Meadowlands Hotel in 2006. An aluminum baseball bat, like they use in college balls. A 23-year-old desk clerk told authorities that Hanley was angered after the clerk rebuffed his sexual advances. Hanley requested the male desk clerk to remove his penis from his pants and allow Hanley to perform oral sex on him. Hanley, having been refused his first request, then asked the 23-year-old clerk if he could just sniff his anus. Oh, gee. Oh. God. God. Unshaven and walking with the help of a cane, Hanley made no statement as he was released and left court after the plea. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Father! Hanley was removed from the priesthood in 2002, 17 years after church officials learned of complaints against him. More than two dozen men who said they were abused by Hanley sued the Patterson Roman Catholic Diocese and agreed to $5 million settlement in 2005. They claimed that church officials, including former Bishop Frank Rodimer, failed to take action to protect the youths. Hanley wasn't sued because he cooperated with the plaintiffs, providing a statement detailing sexual acts he engaged in with about 20 of the boys. The statement also said he admitted to Rodimer in 1984 that he had molested about a dozen boys. Cheaper by the dozen. I wonder if it was a baker's dozen. Oh, I'm just weak. I'm going to read that one paragraph again. Do it. A 23-year-old desk clerk told authorities that Hanley was angered after the clerk rebuffed his sexual advances. Hanley requested the male desk clerk to remove his penis from his pants and allow Hanley to perform oral sex on him. Hanley, having been refused his first request, then asked the 23-year-old clerk if he could just sniff his anus. Ah! ah! <laughs> I just want to die. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> I, wonder if, I wonder if he wanted to motorboat him. Wow. Wrecked him. 
Amid a $190 billion Iraq request, 30 million Americans won't be able to heat homes this winter. About 30, man. As he prepares to ask for $190 billion to fund the war in Iraq, President Bush refuses to approve an extra half billion dollars that help one in four American households pay for skyrocketing home heating bills this winter. The debate illustrates what critics say are Bush's out of spending priorities after he vetoed a popular measure that would have expanded health care available to poor children. No money for kids' health insurance, no money to help poor families pay for their heating bills, but President Bush wants $190 billion additional for 2008 for his wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, CNN commentator Jack Cafferty said Monday. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid says the President's new request means the cost of the Iraq war is now approaching $650 billion. I wonder if the Democrats will give him the money, says the curmudgeon. Rising oil prices are creating a heat or eat dilemma for families struggling near or below the poverty line. Parents know that children can freeze to death more quickly they can, than they can starve to death, and so most decrease food purchases first to pay for heat, wrote Dr. Deborah Frank, director of the Grow Clinic for Children, and Joseph Kennedy the Tooth, chairman and president of the Citizens Energy Corp. in the Boston Globe Sunday. The home heating debate involves grants distributed through the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program known as LIHEAP, LIHEAP. The program operates with an annual budget of $2.16 billion, just $300 million more than when the program started way back in 1991, as Cafferty notes. The House wants to bump LIHEAP funding to $2.66 billion a year, while the Senate's approved a bill that would maintain its current funding level, which would cover only 16% of the 38 million eligible American households. But even static funding is too much for Bush, who wants to cut the program to $1.78 billion for fiscal year 2008. That's less than 1% of the $192 billion he's requested to fund dual wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it amounts to about a week's worth of Pentagon war spending, according to CNN. 11.82 on the poll. We got 1,200 licked. I think we go for, uh, I don't know, what did you say? 14.50. Now, 14 my ass. What are you talking That's not even two a minute. Let's see. One point eight. Well, we can do that, but can we keep it up for the whole last two hours? It's been one point eight since the beginning of the show. You're so why not see Alice? Anybody seen Alice lately? Not lately. You know what? I haven't played in a long time, and that's because nobody knows who he is. Well, maybe people with a really good memory. Well, maybe I don't have it anymore. What's that? I have it. Tootie Fruity Alice. Oh. <clears throat> who even remembers him anymore? Right Tootie Fruity, Alice Rantel. Come out, come out wherever you are, Alice. You simpleton, you, you fairy. silly person, you phony baloney, self hating fag. 1156, although his show is syndicated, you want to know why? He has an agent? Mark Morgan, it's the 12 to 1 hour on QAM. I, I turned off my Blackberry, and I placed it on the table next to me. Top of one at 560, WKM, we're off to a rousing start. We sold 37 in like about a minute. How do you like that for Jake's? I like it. Sure, a big improvement over, uh, I don't know. Well, last week it was just brought to my attention. In two minutes we sold 48, I beg your pardon? Last week they were only allowed to buy one per customer. But this week we're uh, we got five. five, yeah. Like usual. That's because we sure. got a hundred of them. Well, we did a hundred last week too. Do. Half of them are gone already. We're down to fifty. Good. good. It is. It's good. It's great. Like it's food. great food, and you can buy it for right. you can it's use nice it for bath. booze and or food. Why well, beg your pardon? It's a nice bath. See, we don't do. I, I'm, I'm I'm watching the way this thing works, and like you made a good point. That is that every station in the market is doing this thing, which is a good deal, you know. And, and I don't really mind that. I, I, we weren't the first ones, and we won't be the last ones. But the bottom line is this. When you got stuff left over from three weeks ago, like Stu Gotts, that tells me what I've suspected all along. And that is when you see these phony ratings they got across the street, 
based on one month of wire diaries every few months. About every six months they get this bogus wild month. And, and it's like, oh, look at this, we're kicking ass, especially the younger demos. And what it means is they got a hold of uh, maybe some of the employees there or some of their buddies, uh, you know, had a, you know, got a bunch of diaries. And they wired them all and, and they listen all day, according to them, during that month. And then they disappeared the next month because uh, they weren't there in the first place. You know what I'm saying? What are you saying? Wired diaries. But then when push comes to shove, and Stu Gatz is still trying to peddle stuff from restaurants three weeks ago, that tells me, look at that, we only got 48 left. We've sold over more than half in three minutes or less. Isn't that a feather in my crap, cap? Yes. I'm not going to keep refreshing. Oh, it is fun when you see it. On the, on the very first refresh, there were like 11 gone already. And by the way, it's uh, worth mentioning that they're across from Sunset Place, which is a very happening area for what it's worth. Good. It's not like they're 46 off, you know, left off, now. Sort of you better path. grab them because once they're gone, as Tommy says, once they're gone, they're yeah, gone. They don't come back. Just like uh, Hank, once he's gone, he's going to be gone. Like Eddie Kay, once he's gone, he's gone. Although at this station, you never know. Because this station is very, in fact, the, the green uh, earth people ought to be real happy with this station because we're very big on recycling. 45 left, man. They're, they're going out of there like Halava in Jerusalem. Speaking of Jews, here's Jew Lieberman. A new guy, and, and amazingly, is saying something that almost makes sense. A new government report says there are now more than three quarters of a million names on the U.S. government terrorist watch list, raising concerns the list may be coming too large. <laughs> yeah, maybe a few too many. A GAO study out yesterday said the terrorist screening center's watch list contained approximately 755,000 names. <laughs> but because many potential suspects have multiple names or aliases on the list, investigators aren't certain how many distinct individuals actually are represented. Probably more like... About 30, man! Officials at the terrorist screening center told CNN in September that the number of individuals on the list is about 300,000. Senator Jew Lieberman, the chairman of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, said the sheer size of the list raises concerns. Lieberman said the list contains an even higher number of records than 755,000. It contained 158,000 names, including aliases in July 2004, he said during the hearing on the list. That grew to 755,000 by May of this year and now stands at about 860,000 names just five months later. That's a nearly 500% increase in three years. Everybody and their brother is on the list. You terrorist man, you lunatics. How are we doing? 44. Slowing down a little bit, but it would have to because, I mean, the way it was going there for a second. Okay, I'm getting off of that okay. for a couple minutes. I'll let you watch it. 40. 40. Woo! Heavy duty, baby. And then the fact that they brought in the food, see, that helps. Oh, yeah, and great. Taste those great steaks and how juicy and delectable and delicious. You know what else they brought in? What's that? Macaroni and cheese. Ooh, I love macaroni and cheese. I can't eat it, but I do love it. Mmm. And? Just very good. Homemade, pota- homemade mashed potatoes. 39. They're going out in chunks. I thought like you weren't going to look at them. What? I thought you weren't going to look at them. Well, I, when, when you said macaroni and cheese, it oh, then you had to go back and, and there went another chunk of uh, certificates right there. 39. You better grab them now because these, these are going to go today. I don't know how many minutes it'll be. 37. 37, see? 37, I'm in heaven. I get, I get really upset. It's like an insult. And then, of course, I found out about one place, but I don't want to say it on the air. Remember, George, I read you that email this morning? Yep. Or at least I gave you like a sentence or two about it. Somebody was, uh, well, at any rate, we know this is a great place, and they brought in food, and you tasted it, and it was delicious, and it's a great location, and uh, good guys. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Duff. And this is Duff again, see? Yes, it when is. When Duff gets his finger in it, you fairy. Duff knows how to do it. He, he knows how to do it, that's right. It wouldn't be the first time, I guarantee Well, Steve that. learned his lesson. He's setting up the next restaurant, so, well, you know, we'll go there ahead of time. And they'll be bringing food in. Steve Sloan? Yes. He He's learned his learned. lesson. He feels so what that, bad. What about that lummox, Hank Guerrero? Is he still there? I don't know. I mean, he's salesman. here. I see him. Oh, my God. I, mean, I was going to say, is he still selling there? <laughs> yes, he's still here, present in the building. He's still present, present and accounted for. Like Gary Sarner, he's still there. Talk about recycling. How many did you say now? It went back up. Uh, to oh, it went 43. back up to 43. We had some bogus ones on there. We had some uh, deadbeats. A couple of deadbeats, a couple of game players, a couple of fools, a couple of clowns. Probably Stu Gotts and his boyfriend. Well, this is your deadbeat station. Yes, it is. Well, just ask Chicken Neck. He'll tell you. He, yeah, he got three checks. What? 
He got three checks out of twenty. Yeah, that's right. He got three checks. What are you complaining about, Chicken Nick? You got nine hundred bucks there. What, what do you What do you want? What do you want? Like some real money or something from these bastards, from these cheapos? I mean, what kind of a business enterprise is this? They pay the bills when they feel like it. Who ever heard of such a thing like that? I'm tempted to say to all the clients, all of our fine sponsors on this radio station, when you get your bill in the mail from QAM, just send them a note back saying, we're going to pay you like the Beasleys when we want to. Right now, we don't want to. We don't want to. We'll pay you when you pay Book O'Brien. Yeah, when you pay Chicken Act, then we'll pay this bill. You deadbeats, you lummoxes, you phony balonies, you fools. Like Tom Dicker says, QAM is a disgrace. You know, I like that word. I don't think you what? use it often enough. Lummox? Yeah. Oh, yeah. L-U-M-M-O-X. Am I spelling it right? Sure. Well, all that reading of these bedtime stories that I've got my scion. I just, I, I don't like that word. S-C-I-O-N. I know what it is. I always say see a ski on, sky a sky on. Yeah, I used to say sky on, and then somebody set me straight. Sky on. You said sky on? Look, I say lots of now things. Now we're back wrong. up to 45. We're like having some, we're, we're moving in the wrong direction on these. I think that's it's all your fault for watching it. Oh, that's right. I better go back to the pool. Oh, there he goes with the numbers again. You're mailing it in again, Neil. You're mailing it in, you son of a bitch. Yeah, 12-12. 12-12 right. what? I want to pull it. Well, when you quit with the numbers, now you're mailing it in, you son of a bitch. I'd learn from the best. Yeah. Mail it. I got a lot of Canadian stamps here. And guess what? They're worth more than your crappy stamps now. Let's take a look. Let me, if I have the guts, if I have the cajones, take a look at the uh, lunch money, it says. Don't hurt you. Let me see how the Canadian dollar, the loony, is doing against the worthless. Thank you, Mr. President, for those low gas prices. That kid should have been shot. We should find him. That kid that called back uh, when we had the Iraq attack and I was ripping. And I said, it's all about G-O-I-L and M-O-N-E-Y. Remember that? I kept saying it over and yep. over again. Just like I was the first one. I told you these were a bunch of Nazi bastards. Oh, Neil, you get so carried away. Now, now it's commonplace. Remember that great article I read yesterday about the Hitler comparison? Yes. Nazi bastards. That's exactly what they are. You can hear the goose steps a million miles away. Come on. Let's see what that. I can handle it. They're, uh, they're flipping it in the upper right-hand corner here. They're going to show me what that loony is worth. After I get through seeing the oh the Dow is down a little bit the Nasdaq is down precipitously twenty six point Canadian one oh three and a third oh Euro one forty almost one forty three ah oh, thank you Mr President for that worthless American dollar we ain't got two nickels to rub together anymore pretty soon it's going to cost you like eighty bucks for a gallon of gas twelve hundred twelve votes on our poll twelve twelve what was the most overhyped. Y2K, 558. War on Terra, 315. And, of course, I think we know why we haven't had another terrorist attack. But then again. Right. Democratic Congress, 159. Global warming, 62. Remember, cheese had Tommy Thompson. He said uh, he couldn't figure out why they hadn't poisoned our food supply because it would be so easy to do it. That was our uh, cheese head. Global warming, 52. The Segway, 50. Bird flu, 40. SARS, only 12. I bet you most people in America have forgotten about SARS. And so most people here, too. Did I tell you about that guy who smelled? This Russian guy, I had that old lady who was staring at my machine yesterday at Woodbine, and then I had this smelly Russian guy who smelled like a combination of booze and a, a stale bologna sandwich. So you liked it? SARS-12, mad cow disease 8, and killer bees only 8. Killer bees! Killer freaking bees, baby! <laughs> Forty-five still. We're stuck on that thing now. We had such a promising start. Oh, 40 again. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. No matter what happens now, like I told you about that Stu Gotts situation, man. You don't got the audience that you're pretending to, okay? In fact, I noticed, I don't, unless I missed it, I didn't see anybody, even very jackass, who's in their back pocket. They didn't write about the summer book. Even though they His do. Miles probably still writing the article for him. Yeah, that's right. Oh, maybe when Joel gets back from his uh, mugshot. He'll write the article for uh, Barry Jackass. Hey, Barry! You fairy! Neil God. Home invasion. It's what every family fears. Protect your loved ones with the most effective home security system available. Oh, my God! Whoa, what was that? Tango down. Repeat, Tango is down. That wasn't Tango. That was my mother. Uh, she didn't have the password, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks, Blackwater. Harold! What? Blackwater Home Security, with their exclusive shoot first, ask questions later technique, will guarantee your family safety. What was 
is that? Mr. Johnson, I uh, got a good news, bad news scenario. Good news, the intruder has been neutralized. What's the bad news? Uh, we were unable to save the box of Thin Mints. Repeat, Thin Mints are collateral. Blackwater Home Security. Always ready, never accountable. 1217 at 560 WQAM. We got 36 left. The certificates for Jake's, $50 certificates for 25 bucks. We were down to 34 and then we had a couple more deadbeats. Probably the same ones. Probably. It's okay. Stu got us to a peddling from three weeks ago. How do you like that? And, and keep in mind, that's on their high rated show, allegedly. The Dan LaBastard show, you know? Featuring a guy who didn't belong on ear when he was on QAM and certainly don't belong on ear over there. But nevertheless, that seems to be the thing now in, in so called radio in South Florida. People who don't belong on the air. Did you know that uh, before Levitar went over there, when he was on ESPN Radio on the weekends, he would Yes, I do know that, because okay. what he used to do is sometimes he would tape his segment, and he would come in during our show, and would wind up bleeding over on our air, and they would screw it. Remember that, George? Nope. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Oh, he used to do it live also on Sundays. And? It just, he, like, I would be here running the board for a regular show. 32! Yeah. And, uh... All he would come in and ask is, uh, where's the bathroom? Didn't talk to you, didn't say nothing. Piece of crap, huh? Well, you know. Damn little bastard. Although I guess his show is a little more entertaining than maybe what we had on <laughs> certain hours. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never, I, I saw him on TV that one time on ESPN. He was uh, trying to be funny. He was not. He was so a jerk. Trying is the operative word. Yeah. What a joke. <laughs> and like I said, when you take out that bogus number, 31, we've reached a, uh, a milestone here. We're down to 31 out of 100. That's pretty good in 15, 18 minutes, ain't mm -hmm. it? Yes, sir. Not spectacular. I mean, it's slowed down to a crawl now. But they like, they like, oh, back up to 33, see? Uh-oh. Well, there's a lot of crap going on, you know. I'm not, I don't get upset about it anymore. I learned my lesson that one week. I got, I was wild that week. I don't know why. Which week would that be since there's been so many? Oh, two or three. What, I'm wild every week about these? I don't know what you're that. talking about. Usually within just a few minutes, they're gone. When they're gone, they're gone. There ain't when no there's mold. 50, they sell quick. Are you, are you back at this again? You know what? I'll just sit back in the chair, and I'll let you go through this whole rap again, okay? Wrap. Okay. Pa, 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 Yeah, wrap it. When in doubt, wrap it out. Wrap it up and take it home. Maybe some of that great food that was left over from Jake's, the juicy, delicious steaks, mmm, and ribs. You wrapping it? Yeah. Uh, uh, back up to 33. Uh, uh, back to 31 now. We're bouncing around like a rubber ball like Bobby yeah. V. Stop! Like a rubber ball. Phil Henry hated Bobby V, and for that reason. I'll never forgive you that for that, Phil. Are you sure? I don't mind that. It's just the fact that you became a Nazi. I didn't like that too much. And the fact that you lied to us and Rick and Spud. Remember that day? Yep. When we went across the street there at IOD? Sad, a sad, sad day. And, and little uh, Bob Neal. Got up there on the stage and then dissed us, dissed all of us who had worked our brains out for IOD. Well, we've tried everything we know to make money with you guys, and we can't do it. Maybe Buddy Paxson can do it. And then here came Bud Paxson along. I'll never forget another thing as long as I live, and that is after that grotesque speech. Here came Paxson and his cohorts there, all the guys with their expensive traded-out suits. And they're like, he's shaking my hand. And I say, hey, Bud, remember I worked for you in Sarasota for a week, and you never paid me, or for two weeks at WYND. <laughs> oh, no, Neil, I don't remember that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that was like 15 years before I worked, and that's a true story. I worked for WSPB in Sarasota, and then he lured me away to come and work for the rock station, WYND. I have no idea what his fascination with me was, uh, other than the fact that he was from Newark, New York. And once, and once when I was a kid, my father took me there. He drove me to Newark for a tour of the radio station, which was a real highlight, you know, in my young life. And here's Buddy Bud Paxton, and he buys WYOD. He pats me on the back and shakes my hand. Oh, we're going to do great things together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the deal was that they kept the Dolphins and they kept the Neil Rogers show, and that was it. Remember that? Yep. That was the deal. And then little Bobby Neal walked across the street with me, and I think Bob Green was tailing behind, like usual. And Bob Neal saying, oh, you can, you can go to work in New York with Howard. You can go uh, do this. You can go. And I, I thought to myself, and you can go to hell. And rot a wicked death, little Bobby Neal. Somebody ought to step on you, okay, before you uh, start multiplying. He has a handshake like a dead fish. Bob Neal, I forgot. You yeah. remember that? He doesn't actually squeeze your hand. He just kind of holds his hand out there and lets you, uh, you know, squeeze it. Oh, like limp. Oh, lets you squeeze it. That, that's what uh, that priest wanted. Hold it out there and let me uh, squeeze it. <laughs> oh. I want to give it We're a whip. Stuck. Oh, stuck on 31. 
But at least not going back up again anyway. I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to push all that hard because if they want them, they can get them. They're there. It's a great place. The food is sensational. And yes, it uh, is. it's what? Yes, it is. It's a great place. Food, great food. And, it, and it's a good location. So then I'm, you know, I'm not going to stand in my head. Speaking of 32, but now it's down to 31. But when it was 32, it reminded me of OJ. A lot of famous 32s. Gail Sears was 32. Am I right about that, Chris? You bet. Yeah. yeah. Jim Brown was 32. There was the greatest 32 of them all, was Jim Brown. Also another uh, woman beater. I don't think he killed any, though. <laughs> New charges of felony coercion were filed today against, this is yesterday, against O.J. Simpson and three co-defendants in the alleged armed robbery of two sports memorabilia dealers. Prosecutors increased to 12 the number of charges against Simpson, Clarence Stewart, Michael McClinton, and Charles Ehrlich. Conviction on felony coercion carries a sentence of up to six years in the slammer. The four men didn't appear, have to appear before the judge. They were represented by their lawyers. The revised complaint drops charges against Walter Alexander and Charles Cashmore, who pleaded guilty to reduce charges and are testifying against the others at a preliminary hearing beginning November 8th. Alexander, Simpson's golfing buddy, and Cashmore, at times a day laborer, disc jockey, and bartender, have agreed to testify against the aging football star and the other men who went to a Vegas casino hotel room to retrieve items that Simpson said belonged to him. I'm, I'm going to go into the bank this afternoon after the show. I'm going to say I'm going to say I'm going to want a whole bunch of money. I'm going to take a gun, and that money belongs to me. All right. About fifty All million. Right. By the way, the uh, lotto last night. I don't know if anybody won it. You want me to look it up? It was twenty million. I got twenty-five bucks. I spent two hundred and got only twenty-five bucks back. That's not good. Tell me about how I have a bad gambling problem. I wouldn't have uh, said that. You can afford it, so it's not that bad. Won, if I would have got the, oh, look at that, nobody won. It's $27 million for Saturday. Wow, or $22 million. $22 million for Saturday. I'm going to go ahead and win it. Remember, Rainier used to say that all the time, and now mm -hmm. he's dead. We miss you, Mike. Ah, what a shame. What a shame. The good people, they die young, and the bastards, they live forever. You know, like, like Joyce, she'll be here forever. Squirt, squirt. I'm getting a little tired of that crap, I can tell you right now. Us too, Mikey. Twenty-two million for Saturday. Nobody won the uh, six forty-nine lotto last night here in Ontario. Eh? Twelve hundred and forty votes. You know, twelve forty is WGVA in Geneva, New York. Did you know that? You do now. Nope. Every time I see the number on there, I usually think of that. Although a little while ago it was one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. How are we doing with the uh, certificates? Thirty-one. Still thirty-one. Stuck Correct. on thirty-one. Well, it's twenty-one. Anyway. The uh, four men didn't have to appear in court. Uh, Alexander Simpson's golfing buddy and Cashmore have agreed to testify against them. Simpson, Stuart McClinton, and Ehrlich are to appear for the preliminary hearing on felonies, including kidnapping, armed robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, conspiracy and coercion, and one gross misdemeanor, conspiracy to commit a crime. Gross. A kidnapping conviction alone could result in a sentence of life in prison with parole. The revised complaint alleges Simpson and Stewart conspired to persuade the tell authorities that no guns were used in the September confrontation with memorabilia dealers Bruce Fromong and Alfred Beardsley at the Palace Station Casino Hotel. I'm not going back to Vegas. I don't care how many people out there, oh, Neil, you used to love Vegas. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go back. It's too far. If I want to lose my money, I can go right up the road here to Woodbine. I get in my solstice, and in 25 minutes, I'm right there at the door at Woodbine. Go in there and find me a, a cold machine mine. Now, that crap that all the, you know, when you have an experience and people keep insisting, people are supposed to be so much smarter than you are on a particular topic, oh, there's no such thing as a hot machine or a cold machine. You know what I say to that? <coughs> crap, really? that's baloney. That's baloney. There are machines that are in a, a part of a pay cycle that is so cold you can shove thousands and thousands of dollars in there, and they're not going to give you back basically much of anything. You're going to lose your ass. And conversely, there are those that you sit down if you happen to be at the right part of the pay cycle. This business about every this RNG, every time you push the button, it's a randomly generated number. I don't believe it. You're smart not to. Because if, if that's the case, then how come there are so many close misses? You know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. What are the odds against that, getting like three or four of those in a row? Where you get all, all all the right symbols, but they're just not on the pay line. You know, two of them are, and the other one is above or below. And oh, gee, I came so close. No, you didn't. There's no such thing. The close is only in horseshoes and quoits. What's a quoit? I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up during the break. I'm gonna Google. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. <laughs> 
Real American A-Hole. Real American A-Holes. We salute you, excessively old trick-or-treater. Excessively old trick-or-treater. You're supposed to be the one doling out the candy, but you still live with Mother anyway, so she can drag her oxygen tank to the door and give it out herself. Please don't give me no pennies. You should have given it up years ago. But hey, you're Frankenstein. You're supposed to be a foot taller than the rest of the trick-or-treaters. Fire bad. Fire bad. More than one youngster is suspicious. But you don't care. You're jonesing for a baby Ruth, and nothing is getting in your way. Candy, candy, candy. The coast is almost clear when the Johnson twins are picked up by their mother, who remembers you from the third grade. Oh! Reluctantly, you hand over your pillowcase of free sweets and the end of back home before the authorities are alerted. Bible creeping! So, we salute you, excessively old trick-or-treater, your disability check, your cavities, and your candy corn. You are a real American a-hole. From 32 at 560, nobody can. We're stuck on 31, man. Can't get off that number. It seems to happen like every week now. We get to a certain point, and then today we start out like a house on fire. We start out really, really good, and then we get to that point, that's it. And you want to know why? Why? Because that's all we got. We sold 69. I don't know if George will let me say that. We sold 69 so far. What would you say? And we got 31 certificates left. Where did George go? Right here. Don't tell me you're all crestfallen because we still can't peddle these other 31. I'm not crestfallen at all. What are you talking about? No, not either. I'll let Chris keep his eye on it. I'm not going to uh, throw away the rest of the show like I did that one week. I didn't get all upset. I got something really uh, educational for it. Quoits, please, is a traditional long game involving the throwing of a metal or rubber ring over a set distance to land over a pin in the center of a patch of clay. It's Ooh. closely related to horseshoe pitching and the fairground game hoopla. The game's center of popularity is in the parts of northeast England countryside. The game is also popular in parts of Scottish lowlands, Wales, and Wensleydale, Swaledale, Beckhole, and areas of Yorkshire, England. Beckhole, as in Glen uh, Beckhole. The quote is a circular disc with a four-inch hole in the center, which was traditionally made of steel. The quote can weigh anything up to ten pounds, depending on the region in which the game is played, and although a weight of approximately five pounds is more common. This is thrown over the hob a pin set in clay within a box-like framework. The clay helps the quoit stick in place once it's landed. As the game is developed differently in various localities, the rules may vary. But in the Welsh version, for example, the player is able to make two attempts at hitting the central hob. In the north of England, a quoit which is landed on the hob is called a ringer and scores two points. The first player to reach 21 wins the game. Players also try and land their quoits in ways which block further attempts. Sounds like uh, curling to me. A little Sounds bit. like horseshoes. Yeah, horseshoes, curling, all of this chazerai, all these stupid-ass things. 12.50 on the poll. I think we got a better chance of getting our 1,400 votes on the poll today than we do of selling out the uh, certificates. 12.53. For Jake's. We got what? 12.53. What did I just say? 12.53. Well, excuse me, 12.53. I think we're still stuck on 31 for Jake's bar yes. grill in the gables. Well, that's okay. Well, what are you looking at it for? Oh, uh, for fun. Oh, you're starting to get whipped up about that now, too? You're starting to get emotional about it? I mean, I'd, I'd like to see them sell out. I'd like to see they them all sell it. out because they, they, they deserve it. They brought the in some great talent. It's a good place. The food is sensational. It's a good deal. You get 50 bucks worth of food and drink for 25 bucks. What's not to like? But, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, I just show up every day and do the best I can. That's all I can do under impossible circumstances. The U.S. is ordering sanctions today against the Iranian military. They made a big simus out of this this morning. Yeah. Condoleezza singled out Iran as the biggest threat to U.S. security. This is just like we had with Iraq, with the weapons of mass destruction, and their allies with Al-Qaeda, and they stole several freight trains and all the other lies. Rice and Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson are designated the Iran's elite Quds Force as a supporter of terrorism, unlike, of course, our good friends the Saudis. And its Revolutionary Guards is a proliferator of weapons of mass destruction, triggering economic sanctions. The sanctions allow efforts to financially isolate Iran's military and press hundreds of foreign companies doing business with it to back out or risk U.S. sanctions, the newspaper reports. 
New York Times and Washington Post. These will be the broad, broadest sanctions imposed on Iran since the country's Islamic revolution in 79 and comes as the international community is embroiled in a mounting standoff over Iran's nuclear program. I'll tell you one thing, boy, sticking the Shah there in Iran and sticking Saddam Hussein there in Iraq as we did, those both sure worked out really well, didn't they? Kind of worked out like that Kenny and Bo morning show for fat-ass Jolly Joe Bell. It is also the first time the U.S. has directly sanctioned another country's military, the Post says. The Quds Force, the foreign operations branch of the Revolutionary Guard, runs Tehran's covert activities throughout the Middle East, though its existence has never been officially acknowledged. U.S. commanders say Quds operatives have armed and trained Shiite militias that have attacked U.S. troops in Iraq's bloody sectarian conflict. The Revolutionary Guard Corps, the most powerful wing of Iran's military, controls construction companies, pharmaceutical plants, and segments of the oil industry. U.S. officials told the Post it also operates the front companies that procure nuclear technology. And it goes on. It's just It's more of the same. Where it's deja vu all over again. And the Democrats sit back. Yeah. And the public sits back like, well, what's this got to do with Britney and dancing with the Tharth? Don't forget, we're joining World Series game number two in progress tonight at 10 o'clock, and Tom Jekka is not too happy about that. And tonight he is especially correct, because we are preceding tonight's World Series broadcast with a potpourri of swill, the likes of which has never been heard in the history of the human race. We got the Big O and Danny Cannell between four and six, and then we got Dolphins all assess with the Big O and Danny Cannell from six to seven followed by Hurricane Hotline at the Rats cover from 7 to 9. Hurricanes aren't going to lose this week. They don't play. Am I right about that? Yeah, correct. Then at 9, we're back to more Dolphins all asses. Only this is the high school gridiron report with John Linder and Larry Bluestein. High school gridiron report as part of Dolphins all asses, as part of whoring out the station and putting on a Dolphins infomercial for an 0-7 team that couldn't win a fixed game against a bunch of little 10-year-old girls. Then... At 10 o'clock, we join the World Series game number two in progress as the Red Sox will try to just thump Colorado. Red Sox is scoring like 100 runs a game. See, Josh Beckett, I guess, wasn't good enough for the Marlins. Am I right about that, Chris? He wasn't good enough. No, he was just too expensive. Well, that's because we won't build them that dome stadium, for Christ's sakes. If we just will build them the stadium, then they will come. No. Not 28. 20 what? 28. Or 28. Well, that's great. That's the first time we delved into the 20s on our Jake certificates. I, mine still says 31. Oh, it says 28. It's refreshing, and it is mild. Now, what cigarette used to say that? That was the, um... I don't know, Palm Mall. Advertising slogan. What is it? I was guessing Palm Mall. Palm Mall? No, Palm Mall. Palm Mall. Palm Mall. Mall. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. It's refreshing, and it is mild. Maybe it was Chesterfield. I don't think so. Maybe chicken egg knows. Refreshing. Yeah, I was I was looking for it myself. Well, I found it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Twenty eight to go. There's your president, by the way. He just landed in California there. He wants to see the fires up close and personal. As a kid he'd probably like to play with matches. Biggest names. He's sure blowing me up. Like he's blowing up the whole freaking world. Butcher, lunatic, maniac. In a republic, baby. Only in Miami. Good evening, creeps. <laughs> and Bishop here. Glad you can join me for tonight's edition of I Witness Boom. Come in. <laughs> I walk these studios late at night, long after the grizzled journalists and editorial staff go back home to their parents. I'm so glad I'm dead. The days of grizzled journalists who resemble Ed Asner have been replaced by wispy 20-year-old blondes with pictures of puppies on their desk, like this one here. That didn't belong to you, Anne. I don't take orders from you, Skipper Chuck. What boat did you ever command? Outside of barking orders to Scrubby? What's it matter, Anne? We're dead anyway. Yes, but I do live on in the voice of Larry Craig and the toilet paper on my shoe. No, why try scaring anybody? I don't have to scare them. All they have to do is turn on the local news. Back to you, Ralph. Thank you, Anne. And may the news blues be yours. 
Twelve forty-five at five sixty WQM. Ann Bishop, she's still dead. I think Sandy Payton's still driving around that pickup truck with Ann's body in the back. Well, how old was that bit? What? That bit you just played. How old was it? It's a brand new one. It is. Yeah, it's on the new disc. My, why do you ask that? Oh, it just sounded ancient. What what does that mean? It sounded like an old bit that I hadn't heard in a hundred years. So in other words, maybe that's the excuse why we're not paying him is because it sounded like an old bit? It's brand new. Okay. It's cut number three on this week's disc. 1,262 votes on our award-winning poll about the uh, biggest hype. I think the biggest hype was the Dolphins coming back to a QAM. That was most overhyped. And then, of course, the big voice. Your Dolphin Station. That guy. The John Facendus wannabe. 24. Uh Uh-oh. What do you think? Pretty good. Oops. That means we sold 76. What was that supposed to be? Oh. They're right next to each other. They are? On the button board over here. Oh, on your button board. I don't have either one of those on my button board, but I got him in there. 24 left out of 100, so we sold 76. If we sell one more, you know what it'll be? What? 77. <laughs> 1,263 votes. We need 137 more to get to 1,400 to make Chris happy. Although he's probably happy already because he got a big juicy steak and a bunch of other good stuff, too. Yeah, we're both happy. So, sounded really deep. Slap delicious. happy. Good. Tom Turnipseed is an attorney, writer, and peace activist in Columbia, South Carolina. On CommonDreams.org, he writes... Five years ago, my wife and I discontinued using our lawn irrigation sprinkler system. Now we only water our small vegetable garden. Facing evidence of climate change, we're trying to do our part to save water. With water supplies rapidly shrinking, Governor Sonny Perdue of Georgia declared a state of emergency for 85 counties and asked President Bush to declare it a major disaster area October 20, 2007. A drought of historic proportions is affecting Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia, as well as parts of North and South Carolina, Kentucky, and Virginia. Meanwhile, drought is feeding a fiery fiasco in California. In the past five days, parts of Southern California have become out of control, raging infernos as another hot, dry summer turns dehydrated forests into combustible tinderboxes. On October 21, 2007, CBS's 60 Minutes correspondent Scott Pelley reported that recently there's been an enormous change in Western fires. In truth, we've never seen anything like them in recorded history. It appears we're living in a new age of megafires, forest infernos ten times bigger than the fires we're used to seeing. According to the number of acres burned, seven of the ten busiest forest fire seasons in the U.S. have occurred since 1999, based on the records going back 47 fire seasons to 1960. Pelley said last year's was the worst in recorded history, and this year already is a close second with two more months to go. More than 8 million acres have already burned this year. After 30 years of fighting fires, Tom Boatner is now the chief of fire operations for the federal government. He says a fire of this size and this intensity in this country would have been extremely rare 15, 20 years ago, but they're commonplace these days. Ten years ago, if you had a 100,000-acre fire, you were talking about a huge fire, and if we had one or two of these a year, that was probably unusual. Now we talk about 200,000-acre fires like it's just another day at the office. It's been a huge change. Kelly also talked with Tom Sweatin, a fire ecologist at the University of Arizona. Sweatin has the largest collection of tree rings in the world that go back 9,000 years, with each one of those rings capturing one year of climate history. Sweatin says recent decades have been the hottest thousand years, with a dramatic increase in fires high in the mountains, where fires were rare in the past. As the spring is arriving earlier because of warming conditions, the snow on these high mountain areas is melting and running off, so the logs and the branches and the tree needles all can dry out more quickly and have a longer time period to be dry. And so there's a longer time period and opportunity for fires to start. The fire season in the last 15 years or so has increased more than two months over the whole western U.S., Swetnam said. Swetnam contends that climate change, global warming, has increased temperatures in the west about one degree, and that's caused four times more fires. Swenham and his colleagues published those findings in the journal Science, and the world's leading researchers on climate change have endorsed their conclusions. Pelley mentioned to Boatner that there are a lot of people who don't believe in climate change. Boatner replied, you won't find them on the fire line in America's West anymore because we've had a climate change beat into us over the last 10 or 15 years. We know what we're seeing. We're dealing with a period of climate in terms of temperature, humidity, and drought that's different than anything people have seen in our lifetimes. On October 24th, L.E. Venom 
with the conservation voters of South Carolina, wrote a guest column titled, Lacking Vision on Energy in the State Paper in Columbia, South Carolina. She's highly critical of Santee Cooper, South Carolina's publicly owned utility, for their proposed construction of a 1,320 megawatt pulverized coal plant in a rural area along the great P.D. River. You ever heard of the P.D. River? No. That's how they made it. Heard of Yellow River. Rather than pumping tens of thousands of toxic pollutants into the air and water every year, Miss Veno, it should be Veno, it said Venom in the first thing, or whatever her name is, she's full of venom, contends they can invest in efficiency and conservation to meet demand for electricity. She said our state's lack of vision on energy, whether at the federal, state, or local level, is a grim reminder that South Carolina is still wandering lost in the energy dark ages. When the U.S. Senate tried unsuccessfully to amend the most recent energy bill to require utilities to produce 15% of their energy from renewable sources like wind, solar, and biomass, South Carolina's Lindsey Graham and Jim DeMint voted against it. Ms. Vino says South Carolina politicians have become dependent on campaign contributions from utilities and the coal industry. Such compromised politicians all across the country are ignoring the facts that CO2-producing fossil fuels such as coal are the primary cause of climate warming, that global warming is occurring at a much faster rate than scientists predicted, that one consequence of global warming is drought, that the U.S. is the primary contributor to the crisis. To save this planet, we must each do our part and must demand that our leaders lead. As we watch fires in the West, can't we see that we're destroying our beautiful country by our own hand and creating a fiery hell on earth? A fiery hell on earth right here at WQN. That's what Tom Zicka says. That's what Tom Jenkins says about what they've done to WQM and say, fiery, and Joe Bell says, go to hell. Yeah. That's his response, as you'd expect. How are we doing with our uh, Jakes? 24. Still? Yes. I think you lie. I looked at it myself. It says 24. Yeah, that's right. I was so on. we've sold 76 uh, $50 certificates for 25 bucks. We ought to be able to sell those 24 out easy by 2 o'clock. I don't want to have any holdovers again like we did. Oh, boy, is that embarrassing? George knows about that. Yep. I mean, it's one thing if you got some schlock place or something like that, but when you got a great place with great food in a really great location, there's no excuse. No excuse! Except for the fact that we're, you know, talking to an uh, empty deck. What an embarrassment. Yeah. Wouldn't it be something if we still had the audience we used to have? Especially the audience we used to have before Jolly Joe came back. You can pretty much track it. You can track the numbers in the uh, Arbitron. And you can see from the time this man came along to the point where we actually had, the, like, in the two to four hours, remember we had a one share, I think, when Mo mm. was in there? And then Gildy had, like, one hour that was like a 0.8, right, right in the middle of the daytime. Right in the middle of when people are awake in the middle of the daytime. And I remember sitting here screaming and gnashing and carrying on. I wonder, what, what the F is going on over here? Like, and they said, just shut up. Shut up and take the money. We thought all you cared about was the money. Just shut up and stop making us look bad. I'm not making you look bad. You're making yourselves look bad. When even little Tommy Jicka has the cajones to write, it, no wonder QAM has turned into a toilet, into a septic well, Isn't that what he said? Something like that. Into a septic tank. When even he's got the temerity to suggest that this place is on death's door, then you know we got real tsuris, baby. And when fat-ass Jolly Joe gives a bunch of lip service to a little twerp like Chicken Neck and won't get him paid, I mean, we're talking about such a paltry amount of cash here. For a multi-billion dollar company. Multi-billion dollar company, my ass. <laughs> That's some company. They won't pay, they won't pay a, few thou, a couple thousand dollars, for Christ's sakes. Won't pay people on payday. Makes excuses. They keep buying time. It's like kiting checks. That's what they do. A lot of you deadbeats out there, you know what I'm talking about. Kiting checks. You know, writing sure. one check to cover another one. Mm -hmm. Or, in their case, just don't write any at all. That, that works even better. Like, it's golden every time, baby. Well, the checks didn't hit the bank this uh, payday. The deposit, yeah, deposit this that? right in your rectum. Deposits didn't hit the bank. Whoever heard of such fall to all? And then they make up a story about well, the bank changed their uh, computer system. Yeah, right. Chickens pee too. Okay, tell us some lie that anybody might believe, even a little child might believe. When you worked for people that paid you late twenty, thirty, forty times, and people have to get on their hind legs and beg like a dog, beg. Please pay us. Please, we have bills to pay. We have mouths to feed. We have uh, stuff. 1275 on a poll. We're not going to make 1400 either. I don't know why you picked such a, an outrageous number, Chris. 1276. We'll do it. We will not. Not going to do no 1400. That's like saying we're going to sell out those 24 certificates for Jake's by 2 o'clock. We will. Not. If George has to buy the last couple, we will. Hey, now. If George can buy the last 20, that's only 500 If I could buy one. You can only buy five, by the way. Yeah, well, I can't buy one. 
If we could, if we could get four people to buy five and then somebody else to buy four, then we'd have it licked. They'd be gone in a heartbeat. And we'd look good, you know, like, oh, look at that, they still have some audience out there. Which everybody knows would be alive. Biggest names. At least it would look good. Like those phony numbers you got across the street, Joel. Phony, phony wired diaries. Sports leader. Hi, it's the one to two hour. Senator Larry Craig was arrested in an airport men's room during an undercover sex sting. Accused of soliciting sex from a man who turned out to be an undercover police officer. Now, for the first time, the senator and his wife, Suzanne, are telling their story. I have been in that bathroom, I don't know how many times uh, over the years. This particular bathroom is described as a hot spot for anonymous sexual encounters. Yeah. Were you aware at all, Senator, of the reputation of that specific bathroom? Oh, yes. According to this officer, you looked into the stall, mm -hmm. and the next thing he says that happened is that you came under the divider into his stall mm -hmm. and you said quote pickle here I did say that mm -hmm. that is correct sex in that bathroom yes and pulled my pants up and stepped out honey are you gay there's no question absolutely it was a marriage of convenience to cover, to cover a gay a... lifestyle oh. yeah yes it is simply true and so will you resign no I won't resign I will finish out my term traveling the country soliciting gay sex yes it's important to me and I'm going to use all of the rights I have as a citizen to try to do that coming up I'm a bad boy a naughty boy probably even a nasty bad naughty boy 101 at 560 WQM okay we got 18 left there for uh, Jake's in the Gables, eighteen fifty dollars certificates for twenty five bucks on uh, WQM.com. Uh, buy them or uh, lose them, because once they're gone, they're gone, as Tommy says. Why does he say that? I think the copy said that. So you know, once they're gone, he has to follow orders. How do you spell gone? G A N. And twelve eighty eight on the poll, which Chris knows damn well. We're not going to get fourteen. I think he did that just to make me look bad. By the end of the day today, by two o'clock, I'm going to look really bad. I don't look that good anyway. I just looked in the mirror because I did a bad job shaving this morning. You know? I had a little stubble on my chin. Yeah, did you scrape it? Did you I, I nick it? I just scraped it. No, I didn't nick it. Although I do that more and more now that I'm old and feeble, you know? Yeah? You have shaky hands? What? What's going on there? No, Reaper I don't have skin? shaky hands at all. I just, uh, maybe it's just a bad blade. I don't know. I or a gay blade. 1288 on the pool. It's a good pool. What was most over? Let's see if Eric has got the, oh yeah, who should replace Hank on QAM? I, I, the, the concept is good, but I think that the pool is, uh, I don't know, the choices on there. Bring back the crow. Bring back Pharrell. Well, what are they? Well, you know, who did this thing anyway? Bring back to Pharrell. I'll take your children. I'll sell them. Ah! Yeah. 1290. 1290, wasn't that? 1230 was WJNO. I worked there. 1290, I don't know what it was. I know 1180 was WHAM. The most boring radio station I've ever heard in my life. Next, maybe to the light bulb. Remember the light bulb, WFTL? The I original did. FTL. I, I mean, I remember stories of it. I never actually heard it. You never actually heard Norma Kent and, no. uh, and no. Mr. Eagle? No, I never Mr. had the pleasure. Mr. Kane, Mr. Kent, Mr. Worthing, Mr. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, the only time that I ever heard him was uh, from inside the radio station working opposite him. That's Who's that? Mr. Ego? Mr. Ego, sure. And those very early days when you first went to uh, IOD. Remember, we were yeah. there at the same time, but not working together for about a year and a half. Then he went to New York for five weeks. Just tell me what your problem is. And then all of a sudden he became a uh, born-again Christian, and adopting 85,000 kids, many of them of dark kids, light kids in between. And uh, and then, of course, him and that Brian, uh, what was his name? Craig. Little, uh, very good, Brian Craig. Hey, Brian. You fairy. Norma Kent told me, by the way, he was lousy in the sack. Oh, he was drunk. You know. He told me that, too. 1,292 votes on the poll. We need to get to 13 before we can get to 14, Mr. Chris. If you would have said 1350, uh, that's what I was about to say. And then, oh, no, we'll do 14. We'll do it. Uh -huh, yeah, just, sure, like sure. We're, just like we're going to sell out the other 18 certificates for uh, Jake's by 2 o'clock. Not going to happen. I mean, we, you know, we did a nice chunk there. Well, now it's down to 11. See, this, this is fake again. This is not real. They do this every week to us. I mean, I hope it's real, but I don't believe it. Do you believe it? Uh, when there's a big chunk? Not really. No. I think what happens is that when they start the order procedure, it counts, but then they, it doesn't uh, you know, permanently do it until they complete it, and some people can't complete it because, you know, that deadbeat thing. 
Yeah, because their credit card is expired or they're using a phony one. Or right. Because, you know, or because somebody's just playing around with us, you know. Maybe like Stu Gotts, who's jealous that we sell it out eventually every week. We don't have it hanging on for like three weeks all the time. Jesus, God, wouldn't you be embarrassed if you just kept, you know? Yeah, yeah. and about that, too. Oh, you know what I found out yesterday? What's that? Um, what's that guy? Oh, Stu, uh... Nine. No, in the Gotts. morning, guy. The guy in the morning, um... Stu Rosenstein? Uh, yeah, that's uh, Sid. Yeah, Sid the uh, kid. Was sending yeah. texts to Joe Rose and to, um... Zach. I forgot his name for a second. We're sending texts to Joe Rose and Zach while both shows were on the air, complaining, saying that, like, Joe Rose was, like, bad-mouthing Sid. While they're on the air. Yeah, and? How sad and unprofessional is that? Can you say a-hole? Well, you Seven. Know. Yeah, see, I don't believe that. Now all of a sudden they're all gone? We'll find out in five minutes. Well, well, don't forget, once they're gone, they're gone. Seven, that's what mine said here. There's Bush coming down the stairs of Air Force One. He's in California. He's going to blow out the fires. He blows. <laughs> Seven left. Well, we ought to be able to do that by 2 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Whether they're, whether they're legit or not, I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. For the second straight day, speaking of Nazis... Fox News stood virtually alone in advancing thinly supported speculation to raise fears that the wildfires ravaging California are not the result of a confluence of arid heat and high winds, but were set deliberately by al-Qaeda terrorists bent on destroying America. Oh, my God. Right. Fox and Friends, the conservative cable channel, was panned yesterday for breathlessly reporting a sketchy four-year-old FBI memo as if it offered new information linking America's enemies in the global war on terror with a plot to burn down Southern California. The morning team was back at it this morning as anchor Allison Camarota introduced a segment on the fires that again mischaracterized and overinflated warnings from a 2003 interview with an al-Qaeda detainee. Camarota said Fox's fear-mongering was based on some information the FBI sent to local law enforcement in California and other western states that there was a plot afoot to set three or four different fires. Left unsaid by the Fox News reader was that the FBI warning was sent more than four years ago, described as a potential plot that made no mention of California, couldn't be proven accurate, didn't raise any alarms from forest fire officials at the time. Such caveats all were included in an AP report on the warning at the time. How do they determine what's arson and what's terrorism, she asked, noting accurately that authorities believe arsonists were responsible for at least some of these fires. Authorities say arson has been shown to have caused only two of more than a dozen fires so far. Terror analyst Eric Stackelbeck served as Camarota's foil in boosting the terror fears. Although he did clarify that the FBI memo was from 2003, the vintage of the intelligence didn't squelch his terror speculation. Stackelbeck warned that the fires appeared to be the result of a coordinated effort over a large area. In a post-9-11 world, we have to consider all possibilities, Stackelbeck intoned. Even if al-Qaeda isn't involved, and nobody but Fox seems to be seriously suggesting they were, the fires are still an example of domestic terrorism, Stakelbeck said, although he was sure to note that law enforcement would be checking to see if arson suspects in custody fit the terrorist profile. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got matches? Terrorist. And, of course, now you can only take, what, 75 packs of matches and 14 lighters when you go on a plane now? And a flamethrower. Whoever is responsible for the fires, Stackelbeck couldn't help but note the ease with which such devastation can be wreaked with just some matches, kerosene, and dry brush. What a cost-effective means of terrorism, he marveled. Oh, my God. Fox News for crazy people, for crazy people, the same people that think that George W. Bush is like a human being. Insane people. Okay, let's take a look at how we're doing. We got thirteen hundred now in the poll, and I said thirteen fifty would be fine with me. You with your fourteen hundred. We need a hundred votes in fifty two minutes. Well that's you're right, about two a minute. It's doable, but it's not gonna happen. I'm telling you right now, ain't gonna happen. Even George knows that. And George doesn't care. Right. And we got seven certificates left for Jake's. Seven fifty dollar certificates, you pay only twenty five bucks, and the food is delicious and you get the uh, the booze and the whole deal. Whatever you want to use it for. Seven. You think we can do it? You can do it. The one, the one good thing is it hasn't gone back up to like eighteen. Because you what they can usually, do it. what they usually do is they wait till right at the SM. Remember that one week, couple of weeks ago? Yeah. And they waited right till the SM of the show, and then all of a sudden, like at two o five, I check it and it's back up two. like it does. Two what? Left. Left. Solamente dos. C. Si. I think we're going to get a dose, dose of our own medicine. Dose well, dose. That would be good if we get them all, because that's 100. And like Chris keeps saying, boy, 100 is a lot harder to sell than 50, Neil. <laughs> exactly. 
So let me ask you, when's the last time either one of you saw Jolly Joe Bell? Uh, I, I saw him yesterday when he was passing ago. out that... Uh, he was passing out? I wouldn't blame him. He well, it's talking about those headlines and everything. Headlines of what? Remember the one that we sent you about uh, Joel? Oh, about Joel Feinberg? He was passing that out? Yeah, he was making copies and passing them out. Let me just tell you, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, basically what we have is a bunch of overgrown children mm -hmm. who are like supposedly general managers or owners <laughs> or whatever their title is this week. Yeah, they're overgrown children, and they're in a peeing contest to see who can uh -huh. be the biggest overgrown child. It's like, a, uh, it's like syndicate over there sending text messages to Joe Rose. You know, Joe Rose has more talent in his little finger than Sid the Id will ever have in his whole body in a million years, okay? A Don Imus, a New York reject who's just itching, dying to go back to New York and pray that somebody would want him. And when Imus goes back on there in December, you bet your bottom dollar he's going to be sniffing around to go back to there, especially when these bogus July numbers drop off in the trends and they're down to fractions again across the street. We got those two left. I could buy the two. Fifty bucks, I could handle it. But that would be embarrassing. I wouldn't want to do that. My ego isn't that, you know. You can't complain about my ego. You want to know why? You don't have one? I don't have one. Oh, now I'm back up to five again. See? That's not good. Back up to five. So we had three bogus ones in there. Probably a boker, boker, uh, bogus Brian. I'm still at two. So am I. You are? Mm-hmm. Mine says five now. Well, let me, let me diddle this a minute here. Whistle a tune. Like I said, due. Soltanto due. Well, we'll do that. Like I said, if uh, George has to buy them, it's only 50 bucks. I'll send you a check. For 100 oh, We got an update on the story yesterday about the Reverend Ronald Smart in Newport Ritchie. Remember that guy? Mm-hmm. Until he was charged with misdemeanor battery last year, Pastor Ronald Smart had enjoyed a reputation as a community leader, family man, and church leader. It's a reputation the jury decided yesterday he'll get to keep. A jury of four women and two men found the pastor of Union Missionary Baptist Church not guilty of misdemeanor battery yesterday, acquitting him of allegations made last summer that he partially undressed and inappropriately touched a male parishioner. A conviction not only would have meant legal sanctions, but the loss of reputation built serving the community and ministering. Oh, yeah, ministering to people's needs. His good name is everything then, said defense attorney Christopher Fry. That's what he ought to do is Fry. The pastor smiled, then stood up and hugged his wife Cheryl as the verdict was read at 2.11 p.m. yesterday. Smart, 48-year-old father of four and a manager at Nielsen Media Research, left without comment, referring all questions to his attorney. The victim, a 37-year-old father, was identities being withheld by the Times, the St. Pete Times, because of the nature of the allegation, also left without comment. He clenched his jaw as the verdict was read, then exited County Judge Candy Vandercar's courtroom, even as the jurors were being polled. Zero. Get out of here. We sold them all? Yeah, we'll see if if that's minutes, legit, yeah. if we don't have some come back, I am going to sit down and I'm going to pee on the carpet here. I'm going to be so excited. Both men gave conflicting testimony on Tuesday. The victim told the juries that, jury that after going hours without sleep, he found himself at the pastor's Trinity home, blacked out. He said when he awoke, he had been undressed, and the pastor sat on his lap. He was lapping him. The pastor told the jury that it never happened. Instead, he said the victim tried to blackmail him to co-signing her car loan. The defense said the victim was struggling with money woes, was out to shake down the financially successful preacher and executive. When in doubt, shake it out. He was trying to shake him down. Now, what was that other priest? He said he wanted to get a hotel clerk to whip out his what? Don't say it. Okay, let me refresh this and see for myself. Black sold money. out, it says. Sorry, certificates sold out. A hundred of them. And those people are going to have them a good meal. I, mean, I hope that's for real, for a good meal. Yeah, good no, meal we took a little sample. Food is yeah. sensational, so they say. And when you say it, I know, because you're a hard ass. Yes, I am. 13.09 on the poll. We need 91 votes in 47 minutes. If we can do the 1,400 and sell those out, then we're going to be dangerous someday. Not necessarily here. Not necessarily with this manager. But then again, someday, sometime, somewhere. QAM. The fourth leader. Howard David's a bitch. You fairy! Hey. You 
got to hide your heart away. Yeah, you got to hide your heart away. Towels, knots, and ugly dresses that straight gay or by men who talk of other men is a sport for state of mind. No girls here, just sport for queers having fun with the boys. In the locker room, I hear. Boing 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 boing. You got to hide your heart away. You got to hide your heart away. One nineteen at five sixty. 32 a.m. 1,317 votes on the poll. You haven't got a chance of making your 1,400, Mr. Hot Child. I told you 1,350. Yeah, but I the, don't uh, like crap. What? The certificates are officially sold out. It's official now, huh? Correct, Amundo. The tote board has got the red lights on there. It says oh, official 1,319. We need 81, 81 votes in 40 minutes. That's uh, to a minute. Not going to happen. Unless, of course, they come through for us like they did there with those certificates. It, it's for real? Yes, It for is real. real. Don't Correct, say is real. That old lady will call up Joe Bell and, Mr. Bell, he was saying terrible things about the Jews again and about Israel. What's wrong with him? Jake's Bar yeah. Grill, sold out, one hour, 12 minutes. Well, how do you like that for a nice comeback? After I faltered badly two weeks ago and George had uh, some difficulty last week. Again, one per customer really uh, slowed things down. And, and why was that? Why was it one? That's, that's how they wanted it. They wanted to get a uh, like a whole bunch of different people in instead of you know one person coming in five times. I mean, which is their option. But I didn't know that, so I was struggling and not oh, knowing why. Oh, you didn't why. know it. I didn't until just now, recently, like today. So in other words, you were feeling really bad about it. Yes, I was because it took us the idea. It took the us the, the show the next day and you know, all the show the next day to uh, you know. So in other words, you get emotional about it too, not just me. You take it personally. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I just slap well, for a place like that, it's like, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with this place, so it must be me. Yeah. yeah. It must have been you. Nobody was listening. Of course, we are, you know, in the Joe Bell era. If you like the Cam Cameron era and you love the Dave Wanstead era and the Nick Saban era in between, you'll love the Joe Bell era, the Jolly Joe Bell. 1320, we need 80 votes in 39 minutes, is not going to happen unless these people rated 1321. There's another one. <laughs> Unless they really come through for us big time. The poll is, you know, what was the most overhyped? Y2K607. 46% say Y2K. Or some of them might say Why? 2K. War on Terror, 335. Democratic Congress, 174. That was going to solve all of our ills, baby. Let's just you know, grasp control from them Republicans again, and it didn't work. Because we have a one-party system, a bunch of crooks, crooks and wimps. Global warming, 67. The Segway, 61. That was going to revolutionize our lives, going to change the way we lived and thought about life and uh, underwear and stuff. A bird flu, 45. SARS, only 15. I guess most people in, I don't know, don't even remember what it was all about. Killer bees, 9. And mad cow disease, 8. Killer bees and mad cow disease, it's the bee's knees. Well, when I, what is that? I, I just, I know it's an old expression that only really, really old people, much older than even me, use. It's really? the bee's knees. You know, it's, have you ever heard that? Yeah, old, old people, people, right? I mean, something's really cool. Like the really, old uh, movies, you know? Like the Archies would say something it's like that. It's the bee's knees, man. The bee's knees. It's yeah, the skizziest daddy -o. Yeah, that's it. Like Mel Torme would say. Only he's dead. Mel Torme, the velvet fog. Now, if he, if he would have been from Montreal, he could have been the Velvet Frog. Right. 1324, we need 76 votes in 37 minutes. It's doable. And Chris, Chris, I don't know what Chris is saying. I just want to look on that waxy thing again, you know, since we're supposed to be so concerned about them. I, I find the whole, the whole deal to be just ludicrous, the whole insanity, you know, between the two. I mean, who gives a crap? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know exactly what I mean. 
Oh, we got we got we got guys that really know our crap. Like David Sampson says, at least with the Marlins on on this station, the hosts don't know what they're talking about. We know what we're talking about, David Sampson. We lost our ass on QAM with the Marlins all these years. Lost our ass. People are, are taking food stamps because they couldn't get a decent wage because all the money had to go to the Marlins under all its various regimes. Screw the Marlins. Look at that. Six tables, 30 left. Joseph's on the water, 37 left. And Hurricane Grill and Wings, only one left for Stugatz. That must have been from this last week. I don't know how many. He, uh, who knows? What's he got going on right now? I'll give him some help. He's got the Galupi sale. Opens at 6 o'clock tonight on Stugatz. Galupi's. It's in Pompano Beach. You know what it is? Nope. It's a 36-hole golf course with a beautiful restaurant with breathtaking views of water fountains. It's a, I don't get it. Oh, I see. It's a restaurant and a golf course. Chicken penny carbonara. Hmm. Yeah, let me see if I can give a little assistance to Stu Gods. He's got 100 certificates at, uh, these are for, uh, 50, yeah, these are $50 deals for 25 bucks. Everybody's doing it. Let's help out Stu Gods, okay? He's a pathetic creature, you know, John Wiener. If you had a name like Wiener, you'd have a complex too. Can you imagine the crap he put up with in school? People call, all the kids call him, hey, Wiener, Wiener. Can you imagine I, I, I imagine they did. I'm not saying that the name was inappropriate, but nevertheless. doesn't belong on the air. He's another one that Hank created. I think Hank is getting his punishment as much as I love Hank. He's getting his just desserts for inventing Clarence and Stugatz. Oh, oh, the pain. And you recall when Stugatz went over to 940, which was another one of the 85 people attempts to have another sports station in the market. When he went over there to his boyfriend, Clarence, even though he was our program director, he allegedly, so the story goes, was booking guests for a competing radio station because that was one of his boyfriends. Remember those days? Yep. Booking guests for the competition. Right there, just based on a rumor that I started there, he ought to be fired, Clarence. Not personal, it's business, Clarence, although some of it's personal, too. You're a loser. You have no idea. You wouldn't know a radio if somebody stuck 14 of them in each armpit. And you're a program director? Oh, my God. 1331, Chris, you need 69 votes in 34 minutes. It is not going to happen. Guaranteed. Your biggest name. The best This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. I, I, I... Hello, uh, is this uh, Barack Obama? Yes, this is Barack Obama. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, hello, Barack. Uh, this is Dick James. Oh, hey, cuz. Uh, listen, I really wish you wouldn't call me that. Why? We're related. Can I address you as cuz? Or cousin, really. Uh, don't call me that. Hey, are you coming to the family reunion? Uh, no. Come on, cuz. What's your name? You, me, Michelle, Lynn. Hey, you know, maybe we can sweep the potato sack races or play in the family softball game. Look, I know that somewhere, back in time, one of your relatives had relations with one of mine. But that doesn't mean we have to spend time... But listen, I got, hey, I got two extra tickets to see the Yin Yang Twins and T-Pain in concert. You don't want to go? Seriously. No yin, no yang, nothing. You stay away from me, you stay away from my wife, my family. I have no desire to be your friend or your relative. Well, it's too late for that, because... <laughs> Damn you, Obama! Okay, 131 at uh, Dick Cheney, man. He's a real uh, piece of crap. 1337 on the poll. We'll get to 1350, and that's uh, going to be pretty much it. And you're right, that is official. We sold out the 100 certificates for Jake's, and rightfully so. Well, you didn't believe me? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, it just it, we've, we've been faked out so many times, you know, toward the ass end of the day. Oh, yeah, once it no longer says current deals, then it's officially sold out. You know that for a fact. Yes, because once it says, it no longer says current deals, it goes to past deals, and it gives it the amount of time it took to sell it out. What about if it says big deal? Well, then they're talking about you, aren't they? Posters of a rosy, puffy-cheeked newborn baby have provoked controversy in Italy because the infant is shown wearing a wristband name tag with the word homosexual written on it. This is from Florence, Ferenza. Oh, what a beautiful place with so many beautiful people. Mmm. Mmm. The photograph of the baby is part of an anti-discrimination campaign launched by Tuscany's regional government and accompanied by the slogan, Sexual orientation is not a choice. Homosexuality is not a vice and hence should not be condemned nor marginalized or worse still persecuted, the Tuscany region's civil rights counselor, Agostino Fragai, told Milan Daily Corriere, uh, Corriere della Sera in an interview published yesterday. 
I just like saying that. Corriere della Sera. Thousands of copies of the poster have been printed will go up on city walls and public offices around Tuscany with the sponsorship of Italy's center-left government's Equal Opportunities Ministry. But while Italy's main gay rights group, Archie, Archie Gay, said the company proved Tuscany is at the forefront and the rest of Italy should follow it, conservative politicians have condemned it. Exploiting newborns to suggest that homosexual tendencies are innate is a misleading and shameful act, said Lucio Volante, a leading parliamentarian for the Union of Christian Democrats. Some gay groups are also dismayed with the campaign. Gianni Vatimo, an Italian philosopher, gay rights activist, and European Parliament member, described the campaign as excessive. The slogan is too biology-centric, he said. Of course, for homosexuals, it's natural to be gay, but I'm not sure it's too determined by genetics. That team will be saying. No, it's uh, not in your jeans. It's in your uh, underwears, in your BVDs. That's what Marky Mark told me. He said, it's in your BVDs. And I said, can I take a peek? He said, no chance in my pants. 1345 on the poll. I don't know what's Chris thinking. 55 votes in 26 minutes? No. 1346. First of all, when the hell do we ever do, I mean, I know we have done like 15. Didn't we once do 17 maybe a couple of times? Maybe. But that's when I cheated and we started the poll the day before, et cetera, and so on. I could start that other poll right now, and then we'd get another 54 votes easy. You want to do it that way? It's cheating. Let's cheat. Like it matters. Say? Huh? Like it matters. No, no, don't say like it matters. It's like saying when a book comes out like it matters. Of course it matters. No, that does matter. Well, we get a bonus if we get 1,400. We do? No. Let's see. Who should replace Hank Goldberg on QAM? I'm going to wait for 1,350. I don't care. I'm going to get you your 1,400. Look, I know how to cheat. Okay. The best of them, for Christ's sakes. What's wrong with you, man? One thing about fat people, you know, when when the circulation of your brain gets cut off at the neck, like look at look at the humper. <laughs> I mean, there there is no neck anymore. He's got that no neck it left. He's just you know. So this weekend there was um I don't know who did it. It was just kind of floating around that there was a uh, odds-on sheet going around here about who would replace Hank. Really? really, really long. Yeah, I'll see if I can try and find it. We'll send yeah, it. Yeah, find it. I can win. I can win that bet. Then we can put all his names on the poll. I voted for George right. doing a non. Oh, you're sweet. But I know who's going to win. I just need to see that list. All right, I'll try and find it. Real who's quick. going to win, Pharrell? No, no. I need to see the list that, of people that they're considering, and then I will. Oh. I'll pick. I'll pick who they're going to pick. I'll well, tell you who they're going to pick. Already, there's the 1350, Mister Smarty Pants. All right. And if we can't get 50 votes on a brand new poll in 25 minutes, then my name is Ishka Bibble. Okay. It is. My name is uh, Arlen's Inspector. What'd you say? Andrew Greeley writes in the uh, Chicago Sun Times, "Why those who love America are feeling brokenhearted." I feel like playing. Um, what's your name from uh, Standing in the Shadows of Motown? Joan Osborne. Be- who? Joan Osborne. Osborne. What becomes of the brokenhearted? Andrew Greeley says, "I'm." And he's a priest, by the way, but a good guy. Not one of these far bis- Not a child molester that we know of. He says, I'm ashamed for America. Note carefully, I don't say I'm ashamed of America. Despite all its inherent flaws and all its tragic mistakes, the United States stands, however incompletely and with whatever imperfections, for the highest standards of freedom and democracy that the world has yet known. I'm ashamed for America because all the evil done in the nation's name in recent years is turning off the light on the mountaintop. One, the President urges Congress, in effect, to accept the Turkish protest against the attribution of Armenian genocide because it might interfere with Turkish logistic cooperation in the ill-started and foolish Iraq war. That's like silencing all congressional action on the Holocaust because we need Germany on our side. If Turks expect to become part of Europe and the West, they must acknowledge what their ancestors did. <coughs> They could pass a resolution of their own accusing us of genocide against Native Americans if it would make them happy. How humiliating that the president wants us to ignore what happened to the Americans so we can be victorious in the global war on terror, the current replacement for weapons of mass destruction. That's called appeasement, and it was appeasement when President Clinton was doing the same thing. Two, the government kidnaps, tortures, and murders the way the Gestapo did in Nazi Germany. The president blithely dismisses these charges. The U.S., he says, does not torture. But that deception is based on a memo from Attorney General Alberto V.O. 5 Gonzalez defining torture, which the White House won't let anybody else look at. Three. <clears throat> I'm, I'm getting choked up. The government pays large salaries to 148,000 individual contractors in Iraq, more than the total American military there. A third of these are toting guns. Their mercenaries, often it would seem with very quick trigger fingers, ironically the most recent victims were two Armenian Christian women. 
These contractors are kind of an American Foreign Legion, like the notorious French and Spanish Foreign Legions. They may well be very brave people who do very tough jobs. They also compensate for Mr. Rumsfeld's criminal underestimate of the number of troops required. If, however, the country's going to have a Legion and Tranger, it should... What, what is that? And tranche? I don't know. Some I'm French. Fog thing. It should make sure that it works under tight control. An unrestrained security force quickly becomes a mafia. Humphrey Bogart, where are you when we really need you? Four. At a remarkably frank meeting of middle-range officers, majors and colonels at Fort Leavenworth, the soldiers debated not whether there should have been a war in Iraq, but who is to blame for losing it. Was it the senior officers or the joint chiefs or the civilian leaders? The war isn't even over yet, and already the officers who fought it and will have to fight its continuation have already given up hope. Too bad for them because the president's made up his mind that we're still going to win the war, and the Democratic presidential candidates speak about a ten-year presence in Iraq. Whatever the political leadership is or will be in 2009, no candidate seems to be capable of saying, we're getting out now, and the rest of the world laughs at us because both parties are led by fools. Anyone who cares about the U.S. and its legacies has to be brokenhearted at what it has been done to our beloved country by the crazy people who are running it, people who become so skilled at deception they don't even realize anymore that they are deceiving, just like the Democrats don't realize that, again, they're stealing defeat out of the jaws of victory. That's the specialty of the Democratic Party, and that's kind of like QAM. I see so many similarities between the uh, U.S. government and the lunkheads, the, uh, what was the word you like? Lubbox. Lubbox running this place. Lummoxes. Lummoxi. Lummoxum. Lummoxum goyam. <laughs> 29, 29 votes. We got 1375. Now we're going to slide into that 14. And you're going to say, well, we'll put an asterisk next to it because it's cheating, Neil. Like George says, for sure. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Come on, girl. You have to give it up. You've got to get naked. Are you nude right now? God, what woman is naked? Your singing is wretched and your outfit is ridiculous. I can see your vagina. You know, so it's nakedness with a purpose. We're going to do a vaginal honor and check her cervix. We're going to have a rainbow coming out of my hoo-ha. You get to see me naked. I'm not that innocent. True, true, my vagina will never be the same. But who cares? If I said you had a beautiful body, would you take your pants off and dance around a little? My vagina was itching to the beat of the band. Okay, like, would I be able to do that with my vagina? Are you wearing clean underwear? I'm definitely not wearing my underwear. By the way, I'm not wearing underwear. I'm not that 144.16.02 at QM. Now, look at the list of candidates for Hank's job. Wow, that's circulating around the building. We should add some of these to this poll. Well, I'm going to leave that to you guys. I'm not going to potch you around with that. We've only got 15 minutes left. Put some of the obvious choices on there, like, uh, the, big like o, the big O, since he's going to get it. Evan Cohen, Kimba Bo Camper. Joe Zagakakakakaki, uh, and a bunch of others on here. Kenny Walker, there you go. Kenny and Bo Afternoon Show. <laughs> like that. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff uh, Mifo, Jeff DeForest. Jorge Sedano, simulcast. There you go. Uh, Don Bailey, Jr., and Ted Genn, Jr. Well, Ted can't play much football, so how about putting him on the air? Uh, Bill Zimfer on the phone. Lenny Martez. Ethan Skolnick. They left off by, is Alex Marvez on here or not? No. Oh. At least I haven't seen him yet. Jim Berry. Chicken Egg, Boca Brian. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people. Oh, look at that. O.J. McDuffie and Mark Eisenberg. There you go. The Real Deal Afternoon Drive. Mad Dog. Oh, two to seven. Yeah, Mad Dog's going to do a five-hour show. Right. Uh, Jesse Agler. Jason Salodkin. Uh, John Offered. All the best of Neil. I'm O. Howard David and the Beast. The beast, it says, infinity to one against. In other words, he's no got chance. better odds than I got. No chance. Oh, you're not even on this ah, list. Ah, you see. Notice that. But you're on our list. Now, let me just tell Chris, who's uh, trying to learn a little bit of something here. What did we have? We had 1346. And now we have 48. We have 1392, Mr. Hotshot. 1394. We need only six more votes. We'll have 1400 for the There's day. something else that's not on this list. And what's that? Anything that will get a rating. Oh, well, I, I think most of the names that are on here aren't going to do that. Most? Just just remember one thing. What? The other the poll is for fun. Oh, I know. The the answer is whatever isn't gonna work. Because right. like you say, right. with the current regime, whatever they like, there are two things we know for sure. Here's a safe one, bet. One it's gonna fail mm -hmm. and two it's gonna suck. Right. Not necessarily in that order. I think it no, it'll suck, then it'll fail. 
Yeah, first it has to suck, and then it will yeah. fail. It doesn't have to suck, but it will. No. We got 51 vote, and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. 1397. We need only three more. Wow, we're going to do 1400. See, Chris, I told you I'd bail your fat ass out. You're too kind. Who should replace Hank on QM? Hank is leaving at the end of December. His contract is up. They don't want to pay him. He doesn't want to take a 50 or 60 percent pay cut because they're treating him like crap, and he hates Joe Bell like poison. George Rodriguez should do a non sports show at 17. Just let the Cuban broadcast interference blend with transmitter maintenance, 16. That'd be the cheap way to go, I guess. Bring back Pharrell, 9. Bring back Moe, 5. Yoldi, 2. And the Crow has got 2. Ow! So you guys add a bunch of other names on here, whatever you think. Yeah, I just put another 5 or 6 on there now. Did you really? Yep. <coughs> oh, look at that. Got a whole bunch of names on there. Plus, we got 59 votes, so we're way over now. We got, oh, my God, 14. All right. You happy now? So happy. Did that come through for your fat ass? Of course. 1405. 59 vote. Nobel laureate Doris Lessing said the 9-11 attacks in the U.S. were not that terrible when compared to attacks by the IRA in Britain. September 11th was terrible, but if one goes back over the history of the IRA, what happened to the Americans wasn't that terrible. The Nobel Literature Prize winner told the leading Spanish daily El País. Some Americans will think I'm crazy, she said. Many people died, two prominent buildings fell, but it was neither as terrible nor as extraordinary as they think. There are very naive people, or they pretend to be, she said, in an interview published on Sunday. <coughs> you know what people forget, she asked? that the IRA attacked with bombs against our government. It killed several people while a conservative Congress was being held, and in which the Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, was attending. People forget, she said. Nearly 3,000 people were killed in the 9-11 attacks. About 3,700 died, and tens of thousands of people remained in more than 30 years of violence in Northern Ireland. The IRA guerrilla group, which caused most of, most of the deaths, disarmed in 2005. Attempts by the Associated Press to reach Lessing in London for comment yesterday were unsuccessful. Her agent's office said the author, author was unavailable because she isn't feeling well. Oh. In the El Pais interview, Lessing had sharp words for President Bush and his ally, former British Premier Tony Blair. I always hated Tony Blair from the beginning, she said. Many of us hated Tony Blair. I think he's been a disaster for Britain, and we've suffered him for many years. I said it when he was elected. This man is a little showman, a showman who's going to cause us problems, and he did. As for Bush, he's a world calamity, added Lessing. Everyone is tired of this man. Either he is stupid or he is very clever, although you have to remember he's a member of a social class which has profited from wars. Iran also came in for a bashing from Lessing. He was born to British parents who were living in now what is Bakhtaran, Iran, I can't say it, whatever it is, part of Iran. I hate Iran. I hate the Iranian government. It's a cruel and evil government, she was quoted as saying. Look what happened to his president in New York. They called him evil and cruel in Columbia University. Marvelous. They should have said more to him. Nobody criticizes him because of the oil. The author of dozens of works from short stories to science fiction, including the classic The Golden Notebook, Lessing won the Nobel Prize for Literature earlier this month. She was praised by the judges for her skepticism, fire, and visionary power. Look at that. We've got 80 votes on there already on the new pool. How do you like that? It's only been on there just a few minutes. Just to bail your ass out. Something we need to work on here. George is tied with the Cuban interference. You think there's like something similar? Uh, I was about just that? thinking that. Yeah. George and Cuban noise. <laughs> yeah, like that. Cuban interference from Fidel. Nothing we can do about it because I'm sure there is something they could do about it, but. Probably would cost money. WQM goes 50,000 watts. All right. You could actually hear the signal inside of a building. Wouldn't that be a concept, huh? No. I can't Between imagine. Between the fact the signal is unlistenable and the uh, lack of promotion, you put all these components together, and it's like, uh, you know, trying to fish, trying to swim upstream. Like a tilapia. Now, wasn't that a bit of irony, that tilapia, that Toronto is the uh, world headquarters, at least North America, for yeah, tilapia right. fish? Was None of something? us had any idea. Wow. Little did I realize when I looked at that dead fish on a plate last night across the table for me. I don't know how people can eat fish. Oh, oh with a fork, usually. A little lemon. Uh, 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 it explains a lot that you don't like it. What do you mean by that? Huh? huh? Yeah. I heard that anti-comment. Anyway, you've got 25, and the Spanish interference has got 25. Oh, I just moved ahead, 29, 27. Scott Farrell's got 11. Moe's got 11. Bring back Moe in the afternoon. Do, 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 do. There we go, the Moe man. 
I mean, we know he can get at least a one point. Oh, he, got, he can do that. No oh, and Geldy. Ah! So what, what's Geldy doing over there, Chris? Do we have any idea besides the Panther games? Boy, that's that's just... Uh, he's not doing it. He's on no television. Idea. He's on TV doing a brutally Geldy-esque job. You have no idea whether he's actually on the air, like on the weekends or something? I know I've heard him on the weekends once or twice, but uh, we'll try to... Was he squeaking? ML, get in on it. They're all fighting over at the Leaf bench. Oh, look at that. Leafs and the Blackhawks in a big brawl, baby. That's what they should have done a couple of nights ago. They should have had a big brawl because they really sucked. They couldn't win a fixed game. Kind of maybe that ought to get a hold of Joel Feinberg because his people over there seem to have a real good uh, knack. I'm Looks like he's on Saturday are... morning. What is it? Looks like he's on Saturday morning. How do you know that? You're on their website? Yeah, I went to their uh, lineup. Well, listen, while you're on there, buy a few of those meal deals from Stu Gatz because he's really hurting, man. He's got stuff. He's got stuff from before Jesus was an infant. That's sure, you know, send me the money. And that's because they have that gigantic audience over there, you know. Well, the, the audience is like fickle, though. They only tune into them like one month out of every six or seven. And they say, oh, we just, just decided we hate this. And they run away, you know. Like especially between July and August. Fifteen shares to a point. Oh, 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 oh. The sports leader. Down a mountain road in a run-down shack You got the good brethren Billy riding tap in the back Just to sell up spray in a Christian way After hanging up a feller that they thought was gay Fly your flag like a rebel Cause the South's gonna do it some man For its head Alright Fell the daisy nail boat Chomping at the bit In the fine church Going dresses lickety split At the first Baptist church Up in town so green They got the lad drinking out Met the fed up me So fly your flag like a rebel Cause the South's gonna do it to me For its head oh! So freak out Spin like a dreidel Get down Breathe as much as you're able Fool around Your baby sister looks good Be proud and do like Jesus would Fly your flag like a rebel While the South's gonna do it to me For its head And it gets that thing This Christian run Well, you know they cater only to the inbred and dumb Can't spell a word that bigger than Ford Based the votes on who invokes the name of their Lord Education is the devil And the South's gonna do it to me for a tale. <laughs> Judgment Day is coming down the track before their time with the good old boys and gals taking their lives. Can't get any dumber than Southern Fried Prey, Bush, Robinson, and Chuck. Jesus Christ. Yee Be proud. You're 25% or be loud. When debating in the center, look around. Four clown holes to enter, pull down. Your pants to break more in, have another but baby, because that's gonna do it to me. Or it's me. Oh! Bye, bye, bye! The biggest names, the best talent. Oh, and your home for Miami Dolphins football. Fantastic. Sports Radio 560 WQAM. Oh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. I hate this place! Nothing I, works I, here. I, I, Medications I, don't I, work. I, I, I've been here for seven I, years. I, Nothing I, works I, here. I, I hate this I, place. I, I, Nothing I, works here. I, I, Medications I, don't I, work. I, I, I've been here for seven years. I hate this place. Nothing works here.